close the doors of your mind from all carnal will, all demonic thought, all, all, all understanding that may exalt itself, and all knowledge and wisdom that may exalt itself above the knowledge of Yahushua Mashiach and the one who sits in the highest order, with his father, Yahuwah, who sits in the highest Shamayim, and has been in his right hand, and his son. For we look at today, it's Kog, it's Kog Matzah, and he say, Feast of Unleavened Bread, of the day where we are unleavened. We're supposed to live an unleavened life for the rest of our life and not to have any leaven in our house, knowing that even some leaven is good for the rising up of a righteous life. But then we look at all of the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees and all of the, uh, all of the leaven of the cosmos and of the planetary and, the, and, the, and the, throughout the Rakia and throughout the cosmos. And we beware that we beware of Yahuwah Allahim, our father and mother who sits in the highest Shamaim, and seek not after them, but to seek him in every aspect of our life. So this Yom, we acknowledge the one who made all the horror of the earth, all in the horror of the earth, the rivers and streams that serve him. All of the Ramiz, the, all of the insectoids, all of the animals and creatures and the birds of the Shamaims. For Yahuwah gave all those things to Adam to rule and have authority and dominion and to govern all of them. For this Yom, we look at our life, we look at ourselves, and we look at our understanding, and we look within ourselves. For to look within is to find the Malkuth, the kingdom. That's where the kingdom is. It's within you. It's the inner man, it's the inner child that wants to grow. It's the inner child that desires milk. It's the inner child that desires solid food. It's the maturity within that one may be able to elevate to a higher th state of being and a higher state of thought higher state of your makashiba, your yetzer, your imaginations. That you may ride upon the wings of the wind and you may look down, even as you look down in your old life, you look down, even as Yahuwah did in, in the beginning, and he saw that the imagination of man's heart is only ra continually, the, his imaginations and his purpose. So, so this yum, as we always say, close the doors of your mind from all carnal will, all carnal thought, our emotions, our desires, our fears, our laziness, our doubt. Bring your mind to balance within. And allow yourself to be in a meditative state. That you may be able to discern between good and evil within yourself, within your heart and your mind. And as we move forward, we move forward in kindness, ahab joy, peace, patience, shalom, patience, meekness, meekness temperance, and muna. But we're not going to clear anyone or anybody, not even ourselves, if we are guilty. This is ODE Shaloma 30, 31, 1 through 6. There is no hard way where there is a simple heart, no barrier for upright thoughts. So we look at all the things that may clog our arteries within our body, within our hands and our feet. Not only allow our blood to flow evenly throughout our body. So even as we took we partook in Pusak, we ate his flesh and drunk his blood, but then we understand that that blood must remain inside of us and on us and continually that the destroyer may pass by, pass us by. We, we, at any moment, allow any barrier to not be in its proper state, we're gonna be, how you say, possessed by the destroyer. Verse two says, no world, it says, nor whirlwind in the depth of enlightened thoughts. So we look at our enlightenment within ourselves and our enlightened being, you that sow to the wind, you're gonna reap a whirlwind in your life. So if you don't want no whirlwind in your life, don't seek after other Allahims and other gods and other things and put them above your hood. Because if you do, then you're gonna find you're gonna seek, you're gonna, you're gonna inherit a whirlwind and not inherit any type of prosperity in your life. Verse four, and this says, verse three says, where one says, no whirlwind is no in the depth of enlightened thought, where no one it says where no one is surrounded entirely by pleasing country, there is nothing divided in him. So we at verse 3 says, where one is surrounded entirely by a pleasing country, there is nothing divided in him. So we look at a pleasing country, we look at, I say, the green pastures, we look at the dasha or the dasha that springs up from the ground, the green grass, the green fields, the green meadows where the animals dwell. He said, when you have that, there's nothing divided in him. Why? Just like you have divisions within our body when we don't eat plants, we don't eat herbs, we don't eat the fruits. What happens? Then what happens in your body? Then you have division. When you have division, you get blood clots. When you have division, you get 
you get heart disease, you have the vision, you get, they say, numbed hands and feet. The blood's not flowing even throughout your body. Verse 4 says, the likeness of that which is below is that which is above. So we look at human beings on earth, they say, creating the image and likeness of Yahuwah from that which is above. But he says, for everything is from above, and from below there is nothing. So we, then we look at how we're supposed to look at ourselves, and then we look at ourselves in the image and likeness of Yahuwah, then we seek the person that's above in the highest Shamayim, sitting at his, his son, sitting at his right hand. Because everything he created us, and he's from above, and we're on, on the earth. Just like Kuhalaf, um, Ecclesiastes said, let your words be few. Right? Says, but it's considered to be by those in whom there is no understanding. So people from below who don't believe in anything, or they claim they do, but then they say they call on other gods and other Allahims, and guess what? The one in the highest Shamaim doesn't really, they don't really have an understanding of him. And it, they say it has not been enlightened thought, so therefore they have whirlwinds in their life, they have barriers in their thoughts, they have division within themselves, and that's the, exactly how you see in the body today. Not only the body in your own body, but also in, in the, even the people who claim people are in the body of Mashiach Yahushua himself. Right? Verse six says, "Khan has been revealed for your salvation. Believe and live and be saved." Why? Because today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of freedom. Today is a day you can be free from all that, all your divisions, all your all the all of the, the divisions, not having enlightened thought, whirlwinds, all these things that can take you across the world, right? Being tossed to and fro by any breath that comes out of somebody's mouth, right? So this is Book of Psalms, Tahalim, Psalms of David, uh, Pseudepigrapha, Volume 2, 154, 12 through 7. It says, from the gates of the just one is heard her voice, and from the voice of the just one, her admonition. And concerning their food, fullness is in truth, and concerning their feasts, their portion are together, right? So we look at from the gates, you look at the gates of the just one, you look at the mouth of a person, a human being, when they speak. And they say that voice is their admonition. It's the, just like a mother and a father in a home. I'm speak, they're speaking something to you, and they're commanding you to do something, or they're telling you to do something, or it may be just as simple as just sit down, right? Verse 13 says, and concerning their food, fullness is in truth, and concerning their feast, their portions are together. Right, we're at the end of a kagma, uh, the kagmatsa, but then we start to see the portions that we ate every single day. So we were commanded to eat unleavened bread every single day for seven days. Why? So you can know how to be unleavened within. So you so you can see your body, if some who had a lot of weight on them, you start to see you lost some weight. You start to see that your, your thoughts are becoming a little clearer. You're, you ate the bitter herbs and then purged out all of the, the, the things within yourself, right? You're starting to see Within yourself, you're starting to see the transformation that's taking place, naturally. Verse 14 says, Their discussions are on the Torah of Yahuwah and their words to announce his power. Right? This is all the things that takes place, he says, during the cog, during the feast, admonitions, right? Fullness of the truth, right? Concerning their food is truth. And then they're talking about what? The Torah, and there's announcing his power. What is his power? His 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 power is his Kail, his koak is the bar, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Verse 15 says, How far from the wicked ones is her word, and from all evil ones her understanding? So we look at all that. He says, How far is it from, from the wisdom that comes from, from Yahuwah's mouth? It's so far from evil ones and wicked people. He says, Real far from them. Verse 16 says, Behold, the eye of Yahuwah will have pity upon the good ones. <laughs> so we look at ourselves as good ones. When everything was made good in the beginning, first day was good, second day was good, third day was good, fourth day was good, fifth day was good, sixth day was good, and now we're on the seventh day. He said he's going to have pity on the good ones. But the ones that are wicked ones, he said it's way far away from them, within themselves, right? Verse 17, And upon those who cabal or glorify him, he will increase mercies, and from an evil time he will he redeem them. Right. So we look at this evil time, this evil, I say, age that we're in now. He said, I'm, I'm gonna have pity on the good ones, and he said, I'm gonna increase their mercies too if you glorify me. And he said, I'm gonna redeem you. He said, He's gonna redeem you. 
Like, we were not redeemed with corruptible things, silver and gold, or what carnally, carnal things, or 666 shields of, sil of gold sh shields. We weren't, we weren't redeemed with gold and tin and silver and copper. Right? But it says right here, this is Shemuth, Exodus 12 and 14. Right, it says, this day shall be a memorial, a grown day, and you shall keep it as a car, a meat, a feast, a muah to Yahuwah throughout your generations as a statue forever. It's so throughout your genealogy, your, your family. And you shall keep it as a kagag, a feast, for, you know, moving in procession. Seven days you shall eat leavened bread. That's what we did. And on the first day you shall remove leaven, saur, out of your houses. So you should have, people say, well, on the first day you should have moved all that out. He's like, just get you used to living without leaven. But we know a little leaven left the whole lump, but then we start to see the transference of moving leaven out of your body, your houses, out of you. He was saying naturally and ruah, right? But it says, for anyone who eats what is a leaven or kamats for the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Yashra. So you look at it from the first day to the seventh day, did you eat any leaven? If you did, if you ate any leaven, that means, okay, I'm not really obedient in my walk, right? Naturally, right? And he said that lacks a little discipline within one's natural life that one has to fix, right? And hopefully Yahuwah shows mercy and don't, how you say, cut you off. Because he said, because the Yahusha, when he ate a little leaven, Yahuwah, he died. But you see how Yahusha sacrificed his life for you. And he said, if any man sin, he said, we have an advocate. These are all a part of transformations that have to take place. Not saying boy, just continually use your hoosh. I have an advocate. I can just do eat eleven all I want. No. It's more based upon you have to get to that point. And that's the mercies of Yahuwah to get to that point where you don't do it anymore. Same thing in your life. It says on the first day you shall hold a Kudash assembly, and on the seventh day you shall hold a Kudash assembly. And no work. That's today, right? No work shall be done in those days, but everyone, but what everyone needs to eat. So you can eat some food, right? You know, some super, how you say, super people, right? They'd be like, you know, there's other things that you can do. But we're talking about human beings, right? But at the same time, we're going to talk about somebody coming up. Right? It, it does say, whatever you need to eat, right? That alone may be prepared for you by you. You shall observe the cog of unleavened bread on this very day. I, he said, on this very day I brought you your host out of the land of Mitzrayim. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. He said, as a statute forever. Verse 18, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month at evening, right, we did that. Because when the sun went down on the 13th day at evening, that's the 14th day. That's the start of the 14th day. At even, you shall eat unleavened bread upon the twenty. He said, "You shall eat unleavened bread." Right, but we when we start looking at even even this day, right? This is the twenty-first day. He said, "In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at evening, which starts the fifteenth day." But then we see the, when this lamb had to be slain. The lamb had to be slain on the fourteenth day, in between the suns, or in between the evening. But then you start to see even Yahushua himself, but then you start to see why the feast had to come in on the 15th day and why they had to get him down from the cross before the Shabbat came in. Because that was the first day of unleavened bread, which was 14th day at even. But it says, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month. So that's the day. Today is the 21st day of the month, right? You shall do it always the 21st day at evening. So the sun get ready to go down. Right? If anybody ain't no unleavened bread, you gotta eat unleavened bread, right? Just it says, verse 19 says, For the seven days no leaven shall be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person shall be cut off from the congregation or the people, the Adah community of Yashara, whether he is a sojourner or a native in the land. Right? You shall eat nothing leavened. And in all your dwellings, dwelling places, or Mashab, you shall eat unleavened bread. This is Exodus 13, 6. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh, on the seventh day there shall be a feast to Yahuwah. Unleavened bread, matzah, shall be eaten for seven days. No leaven, kamatz, bread, shall be seen within you. 
with you. No leaven, Saur, shall be seen with you in all your territory. He said, that's everybody. You shall tell your sons on that day, it is because of what Yahuwah did for me when I came out of Mizraim. Huh? He said, it's on the day when what Yahuwah did for me when I came out. And it shall be to you as a sign in your hand. Right? So you got a sign in your hand and a memorial, a zikrun, between your eyes that the Torah of Yahuwah may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, Yahuwah brought you out of Mizraim. Now we talked about the hand with the seven stars. Right? You say, Yahuwah, that's my hand with the seven stars in it. He's like, man, I brought you out with a mighty hand. I brought you out of the worship of Ham and worshiping the host of the Shamayim and worshiping the, the Nimru, worshiping the Orion, Oranos, worshiping Kurt Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, the Bear Constellation, and all these things that you see. I brought you out with a mighty hand. And it says, You shall therefore shamar or keep the statue at an appointed time from year yum to yum, or year to year. So we know the appointed time is. Right when the, he said, got the equilux, even until the end of the month. Amazingly, everybody does it in between these times, right? And that's where the signs of the Shamaims are more prevalent in the world. That's when all of the stars and everything aligning. He said, I brought you out of all that, right? But this is going to be important, right? And this, it says right here, and he says, it shall be a memorial. It's going to be a remembrance, a reminder. That's all it is, a memento. It's a record. He said, it's going to be a sign, sign on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes. It's a reminder. It's a memorial. It's a memorial. It says between. Right? It says it's going to be a memorial between. That word from between is vain. A distinction. It's going to be a distinction. It's going to be a distinction between people. A space in between. People. And we know that word Bain, you see that in Bereshit 1 and 3. And Allahim said, let there be light. Or, and there was or. And Allahim saw the or, it was good. And Allahim separated the light from the darkness. Right? How do you mean separated what? He bedal, and he what? He Bain, right? The word right here, or Bain. He separated or Bain Kashat. He put something in between light and darkness. So this is right here. This is it says be between your eyes. It's going to be a what? It's going to be a memorial between your eyes. All right. So we look between our eyes. We look at our front. We look at our. They call it the first. I call it the first eye. In between your eyes. Right. It says your physical eye. So what's between your physical eye? Showing mental qualities. Right. Your mental qualities. He was saying. Well, why you see people with they put this they put an eye in the middle of their in the in the middle of their head or they put a dot in the middle of their head right they put like a little circle in the middle of their head you see you see cultures do that why because they're, they're putting their God their Allahim in between their eyes and that's the same thing you're supposed to do so it's probably a primitive root an eye and I ain't telling you to paint nothing on your face but we're talking about an imaginary field but it says right here a primitive an eye a fountain an outward appearance, a humble, it says humble and knowledge, right? So we look at humble, walking in humility, iron, walking in humility, right? Because we're talking about having it frontly between our eyes, right? So entirely, the entirely of the frontal cortex. So we talk about frontly between our eyes. Can be considered the action cortex, right? Just like we talk about action words. Those, those things that we could describe are action words. Those words have to be put into action. It says, much as the posterior cortex is considered the sensory cortex, it is devoted to action of one kind or another. Skeletal movement, ocular movement, speech control, and expression of emotions. So we look at our frontal attributes of ourselves. It says, in humans, the largest part of the frontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex is responsible for internal, purposeful mental action. All right, so we look at purpose, mental action. 
So we look at our thought process, even as in the beginning when Yahuwah made Adam, he gave him a mental purposeful action that he told him to do. The same thing he gave, he told all his children to do. But then you see where his children, all their purposes and their, and their mental actions became evil. This is this commonly called reasoning or prefrontal synthesis. This is what the intellectual people in the world call it. It says the, the function of the PFC or involves the ability to project future consequences. That's the prefrontal synthesis to project future consequences that results from current actions. So, there, so the frontal synthesis actually allows one, it says, ability to project future consequences. They're under, able to understand what future consequences may be if one doesn't do this action or does not do or don't do this action. The same way when you look at the Torah and the word, the Debar, if you don't do an action or if you do do an action, whether he pro prohibits it or he doesn't, it always is a consequence to whatever you do. And it all takes place in the front list between your eyes and your mind. Right, so we look at we look at everything of an aspect of our frontal lobe is between our eyes, right? And that's the front list between our eyes. It's a part of our mind that allows us to absorb in our mental purposes and our purposeful actions that we do. But then we look at our prefrontal synthesis that doesn't allow us to do certain things, right? If we say pre, that means before it even happens. Like we talk about precognition, we talked about that last time, where we talked about how this meditative state, this kaga, this haga, or this meditative state, has to be a a a part of one's human nature, right? And when, when one actually starts elevating to that spiritual nature, right? But it says prefrontal synthesis, like we just talked about, is a conscious or purposeful process of synthesizing novel mental images. Right, so we look at our mental images, like what images are we creating in our mind? Is it, is it the image and likeness of Yahuwah or is it the image and likeness of somebody else? Or another Allahim, another, or uh, another thing that's a uh, purpose or a thing that's leading one. And it says, neurologically different from other types of imagination, such as simple memory recall. Simple memory recall or in dreaming. So we talk about prefrontal synthesis. In the philosophy of the mind, neuroscience, and cognitive science, that's what they say, a mental image is an experience that most occasions significantly resembles the experience of perceiving some object, event, or scene, but occur when a relevant object, event, or scene is not actually present to the senses. It's not even there. So we look at apparitions, we look at things that Satanal can put in our mind that can create things that are not even, how you say, real. And then we perceive it to be real, and if our prefrontal synthesis, or what they call our frontal lobe, is not activated, we're gonna find ourselves having a little leaven in our mind. We're gonna have a little leaven in our heart. We're gonna have a little leaven in our thought process. And then we're gonna find ourselves supposed to have an unleavened life, I mean, a sinless life, and then we, now we have leaven, and things that can cause evil behaviors to rise, not righteous behaviors to rise, right? But this is, right? So we look at damage to the frontal lobe can occur in a number of ways, and it results in many different consequences. Now, this is their definition, but it says right here, transient and chemic attacks, also known as mini strokes, right? So we look at within our heart and our mind and our frontal lobe, he said mini strokes, and strokes are common cause of frontal lobe damage in older adults, 65 and over. That's what they say. That's just in general. They put those ages in there. But if you go, of course, you know, 364, you're a little younger. But it says, these strokes and many strokes can occur due to blockage of the blood flow to the brain. Right? So we look at blood flow to the brain. Allowing the blood to flow evenly through the body. Just like we talked about being covered in the blood of Mashiach Yahushua. And with picture within and without as, as a nuox art, and we being covered within and without, we redeemed by with his precious blood. But if the precious blood and it doesn't flow to the mind, then you're gonna find yourself do have you say having strokes. It says, or as a result, 
re rupturing aner aneurysms in the cerebral artery, right? So all these things take place in the body. You're gonna have that. And then it also says other ways in which injury can occur include traumatic brain injuries occur following accidents. Or you got the steering wheel, boom, you hit your head on it. Right, the same thing Satan can do with our mind. He do the same thing. It causes traumatic brain injuries and accidents. Diagnoses such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, these are all diseases they, that are created from what? Not having these things frontless between your eyes. How you say the Torah, the Jabbar. Because Satan all can put these diseases in your head if you don't have no blood flow going to it. If you don't have no blood flow going to your mind, then Satan can put these diseases in your head and you believe them. And he said they become the, your, your belief. Just like when Yahushua would heal that one with a healing thought. She said, I have life to be able to imagine that he gave me a healing thought. All this is in your thought process. That's what, that's what heals you. But if they convince you, he's a such disease that Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, which can cause dementia symptoms. Right? Take you to a whole nother world, another dimension. Notice how everybody said, man, you don't lost sight of reality, right? But he said, what do you mean, reality? He said, earthly things, and then you have spiritual things, right? But it says right here, in the frontal lobe epilepsy, which can occur at any age. Very often, frontal lobe damage is recognized in those of prenatal alcohol exposure. Right? Just like how people saying one needs to become sober-minded, for your adversary Satan seeks about like a roaring lion seeking whom may may devour. And we talk about alcohol consumption, but then we talk about not drinking at all, and then you talk about I say reaching your limit, and then you talk about, okay, leaven. We talk about leaven, and Yahushua Mashiach giving a little leaven, and it leavened the whole lump. Right? When, a woman has a, when, a man, when a woman has a child in her stomach, she drinks alcohol, and he said, that's a little leaven she just put it inside of, the, inside of her stomach, not even knowing that the inner child is now destroyed. But it says prenatal alcohol, so fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, that's what it's called, that's what they call it, are groups and conditions that occur when a person who is exposed to alcohol during gestation as a result of their mother drinking alcohol during pregnancy. Right, you say you destroy your own child, your inner child as well. Like, we talking about a spiritual thing, we talk about naturally and spiritually. Right, this is all a part of it, something that's unseen. But when we start looking at blood flow, we look at our body flowing evenly and producing the things that we need for ourselves because Satan's coming out of our thoughts and our mind. And he can, he can paralyze our thoughts and our mind. He can cause us to do things that we should not do, even lose patience itself. Right, so this is the book of Leviticus 23.4. These are the appointed feasts of Yahuwah, the Kudash convocations, which you shall proclaim at the appointed time in the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at twilight, is Yahuwah's Pesach. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah, to Yahuwah. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a Kudash convocation, and you shall not do any ordinary work, for you shall prepare a food offering to Yahuwah for seven days. And on the seventh day, or Shabbat is the Kudash convocation, and you shall do not do any ordinary work. Right, people, people, people look at the people look at the 14th day at even, and then they see, okay, the 14th day at even, but then they don't look at the 14th day in between the suns. They just skip over that, right? Because most people don't believe in Yahushua Mashiach, and when he took he took Pesach, he took Pesach before the actual Pesach of the 15th day. He did it at night, right before they came and take him to get killed at night. They took him that night and killed him that day, and he was already in the ground before the 15, 14th day at even. Because they had to get ready for the first day of unleavened bread, 14th day of even. But Yahushua Mashiach was operating on a different mindset, right? But then it says right here, on the first day you shall have a Kudash convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. And you shall present a food offering to Yahuwah for the seven Shabbat days, seven days. On the seventh day, he, said, he says, on the seventh day, or Shabbat Yun is a Kudash convocation. You should not do any ordinary work. He said, you shouldn't do it. 
do any ordinary work. He said the feast. He said the feast of the first fruit. Right. That's what we're moving into now. So we don't did all that. That's what we're moving into now. We done left that, and now we're moving into this. And Yahuwah spoke to Masha, saying, Speak to the people of Yashorah and say to them, When you come into the land that I give you to reap, reap or consider its harvest, ye shall bring the sheaf of the first fruit of the harvest to the priest in Kahan. Why? When we look at him bringing this into the land, what are we going to do? We're supposed to be master farmers and shepherds. That's what we are, or shepherdess. We're masters of animals and creatures of the earth, just like Adam was in the beginning. That's what he that's what he that's what they were supposed to do. There was nothing here talking about sacrifices for sin. Like he didn't tell them to bring no animals and no priests. Right? That was never the commandment. He told them to just bring first fruit. Bring some fruit from the land. The harvest friend fruit. He didn't tell them to bring no animals. But it says, and you shall wave the, or noof the sheaf before Yahuwah so that you may be accepted. He said, you got to wave it before Yahuwah so you can be accepted. It says, on the day after the Shabbat, the priest shall wave it. So they bring on, on that Shabbat, and then after the day after, they wave it. Not this Shabbat. We're talking about the Shabbat that's following during the week. And then that day after that day, then you wave the sheaf. It says, and on that day when you wave the noof, the sheep, you shall offer a male lamb a year old without blemish as a burnt offering to Yahuwah. So now you see a lamb being offered. He said, he said, after you wave it, right? And you see all these things taking place. And then you see a lamb, a, a lamb being killed, right? We talked about the lamb of Yahuwah who took away the sin of the world, who came to put an end to sacrifice and offering it for sin. And he came to put away all sacrifices. But why did he do this? That man can become a priest? That you become a priest? And that you may offer wave offerings and sheaf offerings? That you may have a continual offering? He did that so you can become a kahan, a priest. And a priest can't be, he said, my, pre, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And if you don't have da'af the knowledge, be not kuma da'af, he said, you can't be no priest. You can't be no con. Verse 13 says, And the grain offering with it shall be two tenths of an ephah and flour mixed with oil, a food offering, a minka to Yahuwah, a pleasing aroma, and a drink offering with, with it shall be of wine and a fourth of him. Right? So these are all natural offerings that they had, that they did, that Yahushua came to put it into. He said, Why would he put it into all of this? Because he's trying to get people away from certain practices. Why? You see, verse 14, and ye shall eat neither bread nor grain, parched or fresh, until that same day. Until you till you actually get to that day. This is a natural, this is natural day. Until you even get to that day. It says, until you have brought the offering to your Allahim, it is a statue, a kuka, kupa, forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. This is verse 10 says, and speak to the people of Yashra and say to them, when you come into the land that I gave you, you show Katsar. Or you say, Katsar, it's harvest, right? That word says, it says, it says right here, Katsar means to reap, to harvest. It says to be grieved, to be vexed, to be impatient. Why? Because why? Because when you when you have to wait another couple of days to go back to doing what you normally do. It's going to make you impatient, to be short, right? But it says right here, to shorten, it says to harvest, right? That word for, it says you shall reap, that was reap, and this is the harvest, because it's, and then you have, that word is katsir, it's the harvest, the harvesting, it's the harvest to reap, right? You ever went and gathered some crops, some things, some plants out of your yard or in your, or in your field? That's what you're doing, you're harvesting. You got to go back into your field after this is over, you got to go in your field and you got to grab some things out of there and get, get it ready to be offered and waived. Right? And these are all a part of the sheaf offering that's within oneself, right? It says, and what is harvest and reap? It says, served. It says, foliage. Right? 
harvested. All right, so this is the word for sheath is omer. Right, so we're moving into that omer, that 49 day count. And it's 49 days. It says a dry measure, a omer, a heap, a sheath, also an omer, an omer. It's like omer, it's for the ayin, mim, and rosh. Right? When we look at all that, and you see all of the, the attributes of right, these things, then you start to see the transition of time, right? So we're not, but it says, verse 10 says, and he says, and he shall bring a sheaf of the first fruit, right? You look at the first fruit as what? The beginning. Because it's, it's going to be the beginning of the count towards Kak Shabu. It says the beginning of, he said, Rashid, or beginning of the first fruit. It says, first, the beginning, chief. It says, the beginning, the first. It says, beginning. It's going to be the beginning, like Rashid. Right? If you look at Bereshit, it was the beginning of the start, the creation of the gods, the Allahims. So this is the beginning, the start of the 49 day count. Right? This, is all, this is all stuff you know, but this is right here, and it says, and ye shall wave, or noof. And ye shall wave it. And once you gather it, you wave it. It says move to and fro. So you're going to wave the sheep? Yeah, you're going to move it to and fro. You're going to wave a sheep in your air? What do you do with it? How do you wave a sheep? With your arms, with your hands. You wave it with your hands. It may, then, you, then he said, I brought you out with a mighty hand. Out of the land of Israel. So who are you waving the sheep to? You waving it to your hood. He waved it to his son. Oh, he means he said, all that he mercy to you, who should have put him on. You literally, he said, I brought you out of Midrang with a mighty hand. That's you. And it says to Berinkle, it says to wave, to quiver. It says perfume, to shake, right? All that. It says what? To vibrate up and down. Yeah, vibration. It's giving off a certain vibrational frequency. When you look at the wind, when it, when it blows against the trees, the, the branches wave in the air. The branches wave in the air, and what do they do? They wave in the wind, they vibrate. Remember that word, Nua Nuf? Remember that word, Nua? Nua Nuf, for, for when Cain was cast out, it said, to, you gonna move to and fro? Nua Nude? Remember Kagag, it says, real to and fro? You ever seen the trees when they wave in the wind, they move side to side? Animals go in a circle, they, they go to and fro. It says shake, it says wielding, lifted. So you're gonna wave the noof, right? This is to be accepted. So you're gonna wave it so you can be accepted. And there's only one type of offering you who accepts. accepts. It, says, it says it had to be a lamb without spot. He said, and it has to be the first of your sheeps, right? And it says ratzon, right? You look at that word to be accepted, it's ratzon, it's pleasure, delight, favor, goodwill. So you can be accepted. So you will, so you have goodwill. It says it'd be acceptance, delight. Right? So you said that answer what? You should have a lamb without blemish. What do you mean without blemish? That lamb has to be tamim. It has to be complete, whole, entire healthful it has to have good health unimpaired we talked about our frontal lobe and all these impairments that can cause when you don't have blood flow flowing to the mind when you don't have blood flow flowing evenly all these different diseases that satan all of them created and that are created to sow in your mind it what it creates these things within yourself it says it has to be has in, it has to have the integrity and truth it has to be without spot it has to be without spot. It has to be full and it has to be perfect. Entire. It has to be perfect. So this offering that you're offering has to be perfect. Without blemish. It has to be perfect. You say perfect. That word people are afraid of. Tamim. They, they're afraid of that. When you say helpful and perfect. Without spot. People don't like that, right? But it said right here, it says you're going to have you guys offer it. It says... And the grain offering, in verse 13, it's an offering. When you talk about no offering, you know, people take that word and they use it for their own personal gain, but it's a minka. It's a grain offering. It's a gift. 
a tribute, an offering. So your hands, your, your own hands, and it's perfect, and your life is perfect, and you're waving the, your hands as a sheath, as a priest, because Yahushua died and rose from the grave, and he can cover you in his blood, he said that's going to be your offering, and it has to be perfect. That's going to be your offering, because now you're created in his image and likeness. And now you got to do an offering that's perfect. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. It has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. It can't be have any spot or wrink. It can't have anything in it. It can't have any type of blemish. It must be complete. Offering. Why? So you can be read songs. You can be accepted. So Yahuwah will accept it. Because, you know, there's a reason why Yahuwah only set perfect offerings. There's a reason. Right? So it says, and he's supposed to offer this minka as a pleasing, the word for pleasing is nikoak. It means a soothing, quieting, tranquilizing, pleasant, delight, and restful odor. It has to be perfect. You ever had a perfect moment or a perfect time where you had everything was clean, house clean, everything smelling good, and you and you sit there and you smell and you smell everything and it just smells so great, and it's a pleasing aroma, and you clean yourself, clean your body within and without, and you wash yourself and you're giving off this pleasing aroma, and then you take that and you wave your hands in the air. All these are all part of it. It's a perfect offering. It's like any other intimate moment, right? These are all intimate moments, like when you're getting ready, to, an intimate moment with a lover. It's the same type thing, pleasing and perfect. It's an intimate moment. And if people start seeing that as a moment with Yahuwah like that, then they'll start to see their own lives change, right? It's an it's a intimate moment. It's something that should be that way. Right. And it says right here that it says a pleasing aroma, right? So that word from aroma is rayak. It's rosh, yod, and chaf. Right? And it means what? Scent, fragrance, aroma, odor, soothing. It can't be, it can't have a, it has to have a certain scent to it. A savory scent. Delight, scent. It's just like he said, just, just balances, just bop. Right in Ezekiel, Yakazio, right? We talked about that. But we're talking about what? A pure offering. Scent. It has to have a certain fragrance to it. Right? It has to have an aroma, right? So and it says in what? And you shall eat neither bread. So until you get all that done on that uh, after that Shabbat, until you get that done, it has to be perfect. You can you he said you shall need eat neither bread. That's food, grain, food, right? Bread, grain, anything. Or parched grain or, or grain or ears of grain, corn, or you say common food, anything you normally will eat. He said, don't even do that. He said, don't even do that. Because it has to be a perfect offering. Because what, what happens when you start eating common food or any other thing? start getting, you start having, you, you lose your odor. You, you're supposed to eat herbs, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread, you know, cleanse your body out, you know, change your diet. You got all the leaven out your house. It's all you already have a pleasing aroma right now. So he's like, maintain it all the way through to that day. So you get ready to do your sheath. And it's only teaching you discipline for the rest of your life. On how you offer to your hood morning and evening. Is teaching you that discipline for the rest of your life, morning and evening, and that's how one is offer, operating. Whether even naturally and spirit, ruach, right? It's the same thing. It says roasted. He said you can't, don't even do that, or or fresh, or that's plantation garden land. Why? Because you're going to, after we leave, you go to your field, and you're gonna start eating Yahuwah's offering. Yahuwah went the first, and you, you, as soon as you're around the field, you start eating eating everything in your field and you not even knowing what that you ain't even give your stuff to your hood first yet so he's teaching one discipline 
Okay, you, remember, you still haven't offered to your hood first yet, so don't eat your stuff. You got to wait for four days. Wait. Yeah, about four, three, four, three, four days, right, to do that. But you got to already have it prepared. And then guess what? Just like we did in Feast and Haste, you know how we did our, our car in Haste? We, we ate 11 bread at night, and we did it in Haste. The lamb had to be slain in between the sons. We did it in haste that day. The same way. You do it in haste. Right? So this is Psalms, Tahalim, 154, Sita Pagarpa, Volume 2, 3 to 11. Or he says Psalms of David, I'm sorry. Psalms of David, 154, Volume, uh, Sita Pagarpa, Volume 2, 3 to 11. And then the multitude of the upright ones cabode his excellence, and with faithful ones narrate his gloriousness. Associate, associate yourself with the good ones. Because who are going to have mercy on the good ones. He said associate yourself with the good ones and, and with the innocent ones to glorify Yahuwah. He said you want to be with the innocent ones, the pure ones. There's a reason. That's what Tamim is. It's innocent. It says gather together and announce his power and do not neglect to declare his salvation to his kabod to all children. So that the honor of Yahuwah shall be made known. Wisdom has been given to the to narrate his works. She has made known, she has she has made known to humanity, to announce to the children his power, and to the exp, exp, explain to those lacking understanding his gloriousness. Those who are far from her entrance and are dispersed from her gate, because Yahuwah is the master of your code and his pride is over all his works. And a person who glorifies and composes Yahuwah, he accepts one, he accepts as one who offers a meal offering. So look at all the, all the offerings that one does. But he said, if you glorify Yahuwah, it's just like you do a meal offering. It's just like you do a, a food offering. Verse 11 says, and as one who offers he goats, just like one offers he goats, if you glorify Yahuwah, and bulls, and as he who anoints the altar with many burnt offerings, and as a sweet smelling fragrance from the hand of the righteous one. It's just like you know how we you give the give the sheep to the priest. He said it's just like when you glorify your hood, it's just like you putting it in their priest's hand. It's just like a sweet smelling fragrance, it's just like a bull, a boat, it's just like offering a lamb. It's just like that. It's just like a meal offering. It's just like all that. It's all just by glorifying Yahuwah, it's all those sacrifices that men hold to so high esteem. Yahuwah, like, I just cancel it out. Just give me praise. And guess what? It's just like all that. All that's irrelevant. Because if you're in prison, how you gonna do that? If you're in a situation where you ain't can't get no meat offering, how you gonna do that? You just gotta give praise to Yahuwah. It's just like a meal offering, a meat offering, a bull offering. A righteous one, all that. Like, you, you should have done away with all this stuff. You were just like, I removed all these animal sacrifices for sin, killing animals, meal offerings, burnt offerings, all that. You ain't even got to do that no more. He said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Why do you think he said that? He said, come unto me all that are heavy laden and burdened with all this meal offerings, all this stuff, baby bulls, goats, all this. He said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. He's like, man, you ain't gonna have to do none of that. Right? Right, this is Book of Kuhala, Ecclesiastes 10, 1 through 2. I know people ain't gonna like that, but that's the truth, though. It says, dead flies make perfumes, ointment, give off a stench. Right? So you look at all that. Remember, we said it had to be a pleasing aroma. It had to be a pleasing aroma that you had to offer. It had to be perfect. It says, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. So just like little leaven, a little, little, little little nasty little smell it outweighs your wisdom and honor right See, who are you? I ain't gonna accept it verse 2 says a wise man heart inclines him to the right but a fool to the left so you got a fool a wise man to the right and a fool to the left right but that word for stench is baash it says to have a bad smell a stink to stink to smell bad to take oneself odious to smell bad offensively morally like you, you, he said, you, you are, you are, you are a baash. You stink. 
He said, just a little bit. Because the, remember, the, the, the lamb that he offered was supposed to be without blemish. It's supposed to be tamim. And it's supposed to be a pleasing aroma. If it's supposed to be a pleasing aroma, it can't smell bad. It has to be what? It has to be tamim. It has to be perfect. And that's the only way he's going to accept it, right? So it's Matthew Yahoo 5, 38 through 48. You have heard it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. He said, what? A fool's heart inclines his, 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 his self to the right. Uh, a man's heart, is a righteous man's heart, a wise man's heart inclines to the right, but a fool to the left. He said, be, he said, be right and be a fool at the same time. He's just literally what he's saying. He said, be right and a fool at the same time. So he's saying, be wise and be a fool at the same time. But it says, verse 40 says, if anyone would sue you to take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. Why? Because he's, he's trying to teach people how to get to have a perfect offering. Why? Because you ain't gonna have no perfect offering if you're gonna be quarreling and fighting with somebody who takes something from you. If somebody smack you on the on the face, you're gonna be fighting back, and you, and you feel turn your other cheek. And guess what happens? You ain't gonna have no perfect offering because you be quarreling and fighting. And then you ain't gonna have no what? No time to even offer. Verse forty one. And if anyone forces you to go a mile, go with him two miles. He's like, go two. Go an extra mile. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who borrows from you. Why? So your offering can be tamim. So you can have without blemish. So you won't have a little folly. Because a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. Verse 43, you have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So you can have a pure offering, a tamim offering. Then when you offer it up to Yahuwah, it's perfect. Verse 45, so that you may be the sons of your father in Shamayim. So you created in Yahuwah's image and likeness. And you offering up things created in his image and likeness. What does that make you? For he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rains on the just and the unjust. But if you love those who love you, what reward have you? What good are you going to have? You're going to have no perfect offering. You're not going to have a tummy offering. It's going to stink. He said, do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your, your brothers, your, only your brothers, what more are you doing than the others? Huh? So Yahuwah is always about being perfect. You know how he's saying, what more are you doing? He's trying to get you to go even extra. Go an extra mile. Go even more. Go beyond. You want your offering accepted by Yahuwah? He said, go beyond. You want to be Yahuwah, the sons of the Shamayim? Go beyond. You want to be somebody great? You want to, you want to, you want to claim yourself to be a son or daughter of Yahuwah? You got to go beyond. And it says, doing, he says, he said, if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? You got to do more. Do not even the going do the same? You, therefore, must be perfect as your father in Shamayim is perfect. Oh, he mean Tami, which means your offering has to be perfect without spot or wrinkle, without any type of defect. That's the only way your offering is going to be accepted. He said it has to be perfect. Tamim. Because Yahuwah is perfect, and you created his image and likeness. So if you're creating his image and likeness, Bereshit 126, 27, then Yahuwah Elohim said, let us make Adam in, in our Salim, in our Demuth, the image of likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the Shamayim, over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So Yahuwah created Adam in his own image. In the image of Yahuwah, he created him. Males, a car, and female, knock above. He created them. Notice how the definitions say male and female, but it also says male animal, female animal. Behold the Lamb of Yahuwah who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the perfect lamb that's getting ready to be offered on the offering. He who glorifies me is just like a meal offering. It's just like, it's, it's greater than a meal offering. It's greater than a meal offering. A bull, a lamb, a goat. 
Because you created an image and likeness. And they, and they were made perfect. So if they're made perfect, that means Yahuwah is perfect. They're made perfect, and they have a perfect offering, and it doesn't stink. It don't stink. Because they were made perfect. Because if you created him, he was, he was an image, you're perfect. All right, this is 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Ruach Kadash within you? Whom you have from Yahuwah, you are not your own. For you were bought with a price. So kabol Yahuwah in your body. Oh, if you glorify Yahuwah, what happens? It's just like a meal offering. It's like a, it's greater than a bull, a goat, any of those things that people did, thought they were perfect and it wasn't. Because Yahuwah never commanded Adam and Kuwa in the garden to any animal sacrifice of a sin. He never did. So therefore, he said, do it in your body. 1 Corinthians 3, 17 through 21. If anyone destroys the temple of Yahuwah, Yahuwah will destroy him. I almost said a destroyer after you. For Yahuwah's temple is Kudash, and you are that temple. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks he is wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. If anyone thinks he's wise and he climbs his heart to the right, just like he talks about, let him look to the left and be a fool. To give you, if somebody smack you on the right cheek, give him your left also. Give me your left also. For the wisdom of this world is folly with Yahuwah. Huh? Uh-oh. It's folly. And a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. And it give off a stench. It give off a stench. It stinks. Since for it is written, he catches the, the wise in his craftiness. That's what happened to, to in the garden with Nikash. And again, Yahuwah knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let one see, let no one boast in men. He said, I got you. He said, that little father you got, is all that wisdom you think you know. You think you know something. He's like, I, no, you think you know something. A little bit you know, that ain't nothing but a, a speck of dust in your 200 square foot house. 200,000 square foot house, your 2,500 square foot house. All right, this is Hebrews 13, 8, 8 through 16. Yahushua, Mashiach is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teaching. For it is good for the heart to be strengthened by con, not by foods. Huh? The little leaven leaven the whole lump, which have not benefited those who devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. <laughs> huh? Who, who will serve the tent meeting? Why can't they serve? Why can't they eat this? Because they kill animals and creatures of the earth. They destroy you who's creatures. He never spake to them concerning that. He, he never told them to do that in the beginning. He said they don't have no right to eat this. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought in, into the Gudash places by the high priest, high Khan, as a sacrifice for sin are burnt, are burned outside the camp. They said they do that stuff outside the camp. So Yahushua also suffered outside the gate. Because he was a lamb without spot or wrinkle. It was a lamb without spot. And that's what you are. You're like Adam, you're you're without spot or wrinkle. How you say you're without your tummy. He said, be perfect even though your father and Shawain is perfect. You're redeemed by Yahuwah's blood. He said, I'm gonna redeem my children. I'm gonna save the good ones. I'm gonna have mercy on the good ones. That's you. In order to sanctify the people by his own blood. Therefore, let us go outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. Be a perfect sacrifice. That's what he's telling people to do. He said, if you kabod glorify me, kabod me in your body, it's just like a meal offering. Uh, it's, it's greater than a meal offering. It's greater than a lamb, a goat, killing my animals, killing my creatures. I can say I came to put an end to all that. I'm going to call the sacrifices and all these offerings to cease. He said, be perfect. For here, we have no lasting city. I mean, we ain't got no lasting city. Cain, Mizraim, Babel, 
Jerusalem. What's the other places? Nude. We ain't got no lasting city. Rome. But we seek a city that is to come. There is a city coming here. Through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to Yahuwah. That is the fruit of our lips to acknowledge his names. That's greater than a meal offering of a bull, of goat, and all that. Because Yahuwah should have done away with all these things. He moved all the sacrifices out of the way. That's all you focus on. And he made your yoke easy and your burden light. So do not neglect, neglect to do good and share what you have. For these such sacrifices are pleasing to Yahuwah. Right? They are all sacrifices and they're pleasing to Yahuwah. Right, so we're going to read this. This is Darius, Daniel, chapter 6, uh, verse 1. 1 through 5 on this one. It says, It pleased Darius to, to set up over his kingdom 120 satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom, and over th them three high officials, of whom Daniel was one, to whom these satraps should give account so that the king might suffer no loss. So they, they're making sure he don't lose no money. Man, I'm going to put you over there make sure I don't lose nothing. Then Daniel became distinguished above all the high officials and the satraps because an excellent spirit, Ruach, was in him. Because he didn't want, he want no, he was a perfect human being. And the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. He's like, man, this is a perfect human being. Then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground of complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom. But they could not find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and had no error or fault was found in him. He was a perfect Tamim. A perfect sacrifice. People saying, why who should tell you to do all these things? Said, Love your enemies, do all these things. All these, all these attributes. So you can have a perfect offering. So when you offer up something, it's perfect. It's tamim. It's without blemish. It doesn't stink. It's not a little folly. You don't think you wise. You don't think you think you somebody. You'd be a fool, right? All these are a part of it. Then these men said, We shall not find any ground for complaint against Daniel unless we find it in connection with the dot of, of Allah Allah. Right? They have Allah in there. But they Allahim. They're God. The God that he served. Right? That word for it said it please there is set up satraps. That word for satraps um, is Akash Dapan. Akash Dapan. Akash Dapan. That is a prince. It says it in Aramaic. Akash Dapan. He set up 120 Akash Dapan. And that word for error says there was no error found in him, no fault. That word for error is shalu. It says neglect or error. He said, which means he was without fault. He was perfect, a perfect sacrifice. He was perfect. Tamim. He was Tamim. Right, this verse, chapter verse six of that same uh, book. Continuing on, then these high officials and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, Oh, Darius, live forever. All the high officials of the kingdom, the perfect, he says, the prefects and the satraps and the councils and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction or kuyam that whoever makes petition to any god or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Notice this happened. He's talking about no God. We're talking about no God on the earth. It's putting him above all gods. The king, they said, make a decree that nobody made any petition to any God but you. And you above all gods. Notice they call themselves gods. And then you wonder why you said, it's not really your Torah. I said, you gods? You Elohim? And if I called you Allahim whom the word of you came, then why are you changing it? Because they call themselves gods. You know what people do today? They call themselves gods. And then people say, so what make your God better than my God? Your life. 
the lifestyle you live makes you a better. He said, even you just read it in the book of Matthew, he said, do you want to be better? He said, what are you doing more greater than them? Because you got to do something greater than what they're doing. How is they going to see your God? Your Elohim. He said, petition to any Elohim, God, or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so they're going to pass a law. He was saying, I don't need to pay attention to the laws passed. I said, yes, you do. You better keep an eye out so that it cannot be changed according to the law the doc of the Medes and the Purge. You know where the Persians came up from. But it says right here, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, the king Darius signed the document and injunction. And when Daniel knew the document or Kathab has been, had been signed, he went to his house where he had wit windows in the, his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to, to before Allahim. And it says, as he done previously. So you see them passing a law, you see them establishing it by a decree, and they couldn't change it. And he, he convinced them to pass that law, and he wrote it down, and he passed it. And then now Daniel goes back, and he goes and prays, just like he always did. Done. Why? Because he's a perfect human being. He's Tamim. And his offerings are accepted. His offerings are accepted. All right, this verse 11 says, Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his Elohim. Then he came near, then they came near and said before the king concerning the injunction, or the Kathar, or the, the law, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes a petition to any God or man for, within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. They then, he said, then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is the, he says, says the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles of Yehuda, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel, and he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Because he was trying to save Daniel. Daniel, because he had a more greater ruach within him, and he didn't want to put him to death. Because he was perfect. He was trying to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, No, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and the Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. And he said, You can't change it. Then the king commanded Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. So it didn't matter. Even if he wanted to save him, he could. Because once he wrote it, he said, what I've written, I've written. You can't change it. That's why Yahuwah said, I, why Yahuwah say, I'm Yahuwah, I change not. He said, I don't change it. That's how you know everything in the beginning when he said, be therefore perfect, even as your father and Shawn is perfect. It hasn't changed. Or why you think Yahushua was saying it? The king declared to Daniel, may your Elohim, whom you serve continually, deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid in the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with a signet of the master. And nothing might be changed concerning Daniel, right? That's the same thing that happened to Yahushua. They put him in a, in a tomb where no man was laid and they rolled a stone over it. Why they rolled a stone over it? They rolled a stone over it to keep him in. Let's see what happens. It says, and the king sealed it with his own signet, with, it, with the signet of his master, that nothing may be changed according to Daniel. I am Yahuwah, I change not. Why think Yahushua had to go in the, in, the, in the tomb for three days and do nothing? He had to put it over him. I am Yahuwah, I change not. It was already written. He had to do it. Then the king went into to his place and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him. Oh, you mean diversions? That's food. He called food diversions during fasting, right? It's a, a distraction. He said, we're brought to him, and sleep fled from him. So he was up. And it said right here, 
Verse 19, and then at the break of day, the king arose and went to, in haste to the den of lions. It's early in the morning. That's when the women came to the tomb when they came to see Yahushua. After the three days and three nights, and they had him in the, in the tomb, they came there really early in the morning. On the first day of the week, on the Shabbat. After that Shabbat. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living Allahim, has Yahuwah, your Allahim, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you out of the, the, from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My Allahim sent his malak, his, his, his angel, and shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me, because I, found, I was found blameless before him. <laughs> I was found perfect. I was telling me, I didn't have a stench. I didn't have a little folly. And it says, and also before you, O king, I have done no harm. He said he, he was found favor in both man and Allah, and you. And then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he trusted in his Allah. And the king commanded, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions, they and their children and their wives. This is going to happen to you. People saying, this is going to happen to you. And amazingly, he threw them in the den of lions. And the people thinking like, when Yahushua comes back to judge people, they're thinking like, all those who falsely accuse people and all these things, you think you ain't going to be thrown in there with your family? Remember he said, remember he said that he said you try to first bind the strong man first before you take the house. It says, and before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke their bones in pieces. They didn't even get down to the bottom. Because they weren't perfect. Because the, the people who falsely accused them and set a trap and pass a, a law just to try to the scheme against somebody with an excellent ruach who was perfect, it didn't work. And their wives and their children, and, and they were thrown in the dens of lions, and the lions didn't even have no mercy on them. Because Yahuwah ain't had no mercy on them. Because they ain't trusting Yahuwah, all he, and they weren't blameless. What do you mean, oh, their offering was not a pleasing aroma? Verse 25, then the king Darius wrote all, to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace or shalom be multiplied to you. He wrote in all the earth. He was saying, how do you hold a fame got out throughout all the earth? He said, His, your fame will go out like wine in Lebanon. He said, I make a decree that in all my royal and me and people are to tremble and fear before Allah, the Allahim of Daniel, for he is a living Allahim enduring forever. His kingdom shall be never destroyed, and his dominion shall be have no shall be to, to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in Shamaims and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. The Ark, right? When that word for found blameless is the Zaku. He said he was because he was found blameless. That word is zaku. He said he was found in purity and innocence. That's why he was delivered. He was perfect. He was pure. He was innocent. And he was delivered. He was a perfect sacrifice. Just like when he came early in the morning and they rolled back the stone, he was a perfect sacrifice. He said, he, Yehud, he sent his Malak and he delivered, he closed the lion's mouth and he delivered me from there. He was perfect. This Daniel 10, one through 12. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel who was named Belteshazzar. And the word was true. And it was a great, it was a great in conflict. And he understood the word and had understanding of the vision. And in those days, I Daniel mourned three weeks. Three weeks, seven times three is 21. What today is? 
This is the 21st day of loving bread. This is the 21st day of unleavened bread, Kagmata. He said, I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth. Right? Because that word for meat, people thinking, right? But here we go. Into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for a full three weeks. And on the 24th day of the first month, and we on the 21st, 21st day of the first month? Or well, this is the 24th day, but that's three days, three days later from right now. 24th day of the first month. That's three days from now. So he was fasting. How you say, in captivity, but he was fasting during Kogmasa. He wasn't eating nothing. And what did he do? He said he didn't know himself at all. And for three full weeks, and for 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the river, that is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a man clothed in linen, or bod, bod garments. That word for linen is bod. And it says, with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like burl, his face like the appearance of lightning, and his eyes were flaming torches. His arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and the sound of his words like the sound of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but great trembling fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision, and no strength was left in me. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed. And I retained no strength. He had none. He had none. He said, then I heard a sound of his words. And I heard the sound of, of, the word, of his words. And I fell on my face in a deep sleep. With my face to the ground. Why? Because you ain't got a lot of strength when you when you when you're that long. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved. So a man, he said, you greatly love. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, fear not, Daniel, for the first, from the first day that you set your heart to understanding and humbled yourself before your Elohim, your words have been heard. And I have, be, and I have come because of your words. Because of your governing your words. He said, I come because of your words. It says, verse 13 says, The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. What day is this? This is the 21st day. He said, 20, 21 days, but Michal, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. He was left where? With the kings of Persia. He said, but Michal came to help me and came to make you understand. He said, I came by the help. He said, and I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision is, is for days yet to come. He said that when he had spoken to me concerning these words, I turned my face toward the ground and was mute. This is the 24th day. He said, man, for 21 days, man, they were, man, they were fighting against me. Amazingly, during these 21 days of the first month, you have many signs and wonders in the Shamaim. You have the, the kuka, the plant, all of the, the luminaries, the sun, moon, the stars, all these things start doing signs and wonders. And people were dismayed at these signs and wonders, not even knowing who was, he said for 21 days, Michal, Michael, Michal, the Malachi Michael was like, they, they, one of the chief, he said, man, they were, they were standing me for 21 days. It says right here, and he said, mute, and behold, one in the likeness of the children of Adam touched my lips. He said, he said, I fell on my face and I tore the ground. I was mute, he was, I was mute. He said, behold, one of the likeness of the children of Adam touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke. And I said to him who stood before me, Oh, my master, because this is very key. Most people don't know this. 
by reason of, of vision, pains have come upon me, and I retain no strength. How can my master's servants talk with master? Right? For now, no strength remains in me, and no breath is left in me. Again, one having the appearance of a man touched me and strengthened me. He had the appearance of Adam. And he said to me, O oh man, Adam, greatly loved, fear not. Shalom be to you. Be strong and of good courage. And as he spoke to me, I was strengthened. Huh? As he spoke to me, I was strengthened. And I and said, let my master speak, for you have strengthened me. This is Matthew Yahoo 401. Then Yahushua was led in the Ruach in the wilderness to be tempted by Satanah, just like we're in the wilderness now. And a lot of people have been tempted by Satanah in their mind right now. It says, and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him, if you are the son of Yahuwah, command these stones to be, become loaves of bread. Why? Because he has the ability to do that. But he answered, it is written. Where is it written at? Man should not live by bread alone, but by every the bar that comes out of the mouth of Yahuwah. That's the same thing we read in the book of Deuteronomy yesterday, the other day. Why? Because he said, I'll suffer you to hunger, that you're going to know that. That's the only reason he did. Why do you think, why you think Daniel, when he was on the ground, after he fasted for 21 days, he was like, he's like, speak, for you have strengthened me. What strengthens the human body after you fast? Food, bread. But he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every the bar that proceeds of the mouth of Yahuwah. When he spoke to the bar to Daniel, he said, you strengthened me. Then the Sultan all took him to the Kadash city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of Yahuwah, throw yourself down for it is written, he will give his Malachi, give his Malachi concerning you. He will command his Malachi concerning you and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot in against the stone. Because ain't Yahuwah, he's blameless. He, it's a meme offering. Yahuwah is supposed to deliver him from everything. Yahushua said to him, again, it is written, you shall not put Yahuwah, your Elohim, to the test. Again, the Satan, or Satan, took him on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their kabod. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. He said, man, make, nobody make no petition to any Elohim for, t for 30 days. If anyone does it, they'll be thrown into the lion's den. What do you think Yahushua at right here? He said, Satan run, runs around like a roaring lion, seeking who may devour. Where he at? He in the lion's den. And what did he say? Then Yahushua said to him, Be gone, Satan, all, for it is written, You shall worship Yahuwah, your Elohim, and him only shall thou you serve. Then y'all opened the window, just like he did, always did. Three times a day, he made his petition to Yahuwah. Then Satanah left him. And behold, and Malachim came and were ministering to him. Why? They were strengthening him. Just like Daniel. And the Malachim came to rescue him from the mouth of the lion too. Same thing. Because they were perfect. They were perfect offerings. They were perfect offerings. All right, it's Matthew 17, 14 to 22. And when they came to, came to the crowd, a man came up to him and kneeling before him said, Master, have mercy on my son, for he has seizures and he suffers terribly. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not heal him. They couldn't do it. People say, where's Satan all come at? In your mind. I probably said you Satan all left him. Satan came into his mind and he had a discussion. That's where he's coming at. In your thought process. Both male and female. And Yahushua answered, Oh faithless and twisted generation, how long 
am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Yahushua rebuked the demon, the Shadim. And it came out of him. And the boy was healed instantly. He said, he said, Kum Shadim. Bo. And then the disciples came to Yahushua privately and said, why could we not cast them out? Cast it out. He said to them, because of your little amunah. Because <laughs> you ain't risen yet. You ain't grown up yet. You got a little love. Because you ain't perfect. You ain't got a perfect offering. Just like Yahushua is perfect. You're not perfect like your father in Shamaim. That why. And for truly, I say to you, if you have a moon like a grain of a mustard seed, just like a seed that falls into the ground, a farming term that everybody should know, and every child and mother and father and anybody who believes in Yahushua should have already done in their life, at least, says, you will say to this mountain, move from here, there, to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Well, so why is everything impossible for everybody today? Why is everything impossible for you? Why is, it, why is it everything impossible for you? He said, because you, he said, you don't have a moon like a mustard seed. Like a seed. And he'd be saying, what do you mean? That mean you probably need to go plant some seeds. It should start today. Amazingly, after today, it starts to seed song. He said, go, go, uh, go get prepared to plant some seeds. He said, you might learn a little something about a moon. Because you got to hope for that seed to grow. Verse 22 says, And as they were gathering in Galilee, Yahushua said to them, The son of Adam is about to be delivered into the hands of men. Ain't that what happened to Daniel? Because he already knew what was going to happen. He said, he, once he heard it happen, he heard the decree happen, he's like, I'm going to jail. Yahuwah Elohim. I was being exiled, he started confessing his sins. Confessing his sins, just like every other time. Because he already knew he was going to jail. Once they found out he was doing it, he already knew what was going to happen to him. The son of Adam is about to be delivered in the hands of men. I said, man, look at here. I don't I done offer petition. And they will kill him. <laughs> and he will be raised the third day. Huh? He's going to be raised the third day. And he said, and they were greatly distressed. Everybody was scared. Like, what in the world? Not Daniel, though. The men that gave up then y'all they were distressed because they couldn't find anything any fault in him or he say any any baash any stink in his walk they were trying to find that error in his life but shalu they were trying to find something on him and they couldn't find anything right this is luke or 22 14 through 23 and when the hour came, he reclined at the table. Oh, amazingly, what does that word for crying? Uh, he, he said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. I have no lack. He made me lie down in green pastures. <laughs> One of the definitions of that, I believe word was it? reclining. He made me find rest. He said that when he came, the hour came, he reclined at the table. And the Shalom came with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly, earnestly desired to eat this Pesach with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat. He fasted. Until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of Yahuwah. So he ain't, he fasted. Just like Daniel. He perfect offering. And he took, the, took, the, took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, take this, divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Yahuwah comes. And he took bread, and when he had gave thanks, he, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. He was like, Why is he doing this? Because he, just like the book of Yeshua 58, he said, This is a fast that I chose, that you should give your bread to the hungry. You should, you should, he'll bind up all the brokenhearted to break every stronghold and yoke. He said, then your light going to shine on your noonday. He says, brother, he says, do this in remembrance of me. Do it in remembrance of who? 
No, he said fast and pray and do all that. No, he said eat this bread and drink this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup is poured out for you, is the covenant of my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is, is with me on the table. For the son of Adam goes as it has been determined. But woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. He said, often as you do this, you remember his death and suffering. You remember him till he come. What are we doing now? We're remembering him. He said, as often as you actually teach about this, you're remembering this person. You start understanding them. And they began to question one another. Which one of them it could be who was going to do this? And moving, moving forward, we'll fast to Matthew 26, 47 to 68. While he was still speaking, Judas came with the 12 and with him a, a, a great crowd with swords and clubs of the chief priests and the elders of the people. You mean the kings, the Persians, and the Medes. When they came to capture, take down you all throw him in the lines and now the betrayer was giving them a sign the one I will kiss is, is the man seize him and he came to Yahushua at once and he said greetings teacher because you only got one teacher and he kissed him he says Yahushua aid to him he says friend do what you came to do he says then they came up and laid hands on Yahushua and seized him and brought him to the lines then and behold, one of those who were with Yahushua stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck off the servant Hakahan and cut his ear. And Yahushua said to him, Put your sword back in your sheath, for all who take the sword will perish with the sword. Do you not think I can command and appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of Malachim? But how should the scripture be fulfilled? How dang y'all gonna be fulfilled? That it must be so. How are you gonna be fulfilled? How, how waving the sheep gonna be fulfilled? I'm a perfect offering. How the Pesach lamb going to be fulfilled? You're going to die and you'll sin if I don't do this. He said, how, how is it going to be fulfilled? And after that hour, Yahushua said to the crowds, have you come out as a, as a, as a against a robber with swords and clubs and to capture me? Because he's he perfect. They were trying to find the error on him. I ain't no thief. Says day after day I sat in your temple teaching and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scripture of the Nabi might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. That's what happens. When they, when they come to get you, when they come to take you, notice Daniel was by himself. He said, everybody, he said, the vision, I saw the vision alone. All the men were with me, they didn't even see it. That's what happens when you get captured. Or when something happened, everybody leaves. They flee. When they come, they take everything you have or take stuff, people going out the door. That's you. They ain't me. They file, they say, they, they file, they file injury. That has nothing to do with me. Right? They gone. You're going to let them alone. Right? This verse 57 says, Then those who had seized Yahushua led him to Kaif as the high Khan, where the scribes and the elders had, were gathered, and Kaif was following him at a distance. As far as the courtyard of the high Kahan, they were going inside, and he sat at the guards to see the end. Now the chief Kahan and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Yahushua that, that, the Yahushua that they might put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of Yahuwah and rebuild it in three days. And the high Kahan stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is this this men testify against you? But Yahushua remained silent. Then Daniel, when he, Malachi spoke to him, what did he do? He put his head to the ground. He became mute. He said, but how the scripture going to be fulfilled if I, if I don't come forward? And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living Allahim. Tell us if you are the Mashiach, the son of Yahuwah. Yahushua said to them, you have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the son of Adam coming, seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of Shammai. He said, declare, declare them your power. He said, I'm going to save the good ones. The I'm going to have mercy on the good ones. 
Then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has uttered blasphemy. What further need, witness do we need? He made petition to his Allahim outside the law of the king. What further witness we need? We got all the, all the evidence we need right now on this perfect sacrifice, this perfect man, this Tamim, this man with no error. We found something in his tour against him, right? his law, his Allahim. That's what they think. So what further witness we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, he deserves death. Throw him in the lion's den. Then they spit in his face and struck him. And some slapped him. Give him your right cheek. Give him your left also. Be right and a fool at the same time. He said, saying, not but to us, you Mashiach, you anointed one. He said, you, you weren't afraid to put out your hand and touch you who is Mashiach. He said, how many times do you got to say this? Because people forget. People are like, you weren't afraid. Because you know when you do it to somebody else, you're doing it to me. He's like, who is that struck you? Matthew 27, 27 to 30. Then the soldiers of the governors took Yahushua to the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And amazingly, when they struck Yahushua, the left and the right, they don't even know they were touching who in Mashiach. That's the same thing Daniel did they, when they threw him in the lion's den. And all the people that conspired, they didn't even physically touch him. They just passed the law. And he said he threw them, their children, and their wives into the lion's den. And the lion's den destroyed them. Just for even touching you who was Mashiach. Because he was perfect. He was perfect. He was anointed too. He was Mashak. Then y'all was Mashak. But then when they threw him in the lines, then that's called Mashiach. Now you don't touch you who is Mashiach. And now he said, You should die. But then Yahuwah said, No, nah, you should live. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and twisting together a crown of thorns. They put it on his head and a reed in his right hand and kneeling before him, they mocked him saying, Hail, Malachi the Yahudim. And they spit on him and took a reed and struck him in the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his robe and put on his clothes and let him crucify him. Mark 15, 19 to 21. And they were striking his head and a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his purple, purple cloak and put on his own clothes on him and let him crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the, the, father, the father of Alexander Rufus, to carry his cross. It's Matthew 27, 32, skipping down. It says, And they went out and found a man of Cyrene by name, and they compelled him to ca carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means a place of skull, they offered him wine to drink. <laughs> they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, and when he had tasted it, he would not drink it. He like, man, I'm perfect. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them, casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put his charge against him. This rich red, Yahushua, the Malachi, the Yahudim. The two robbers who were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him wagging their heads and saying, who, you who destroyed the temple, rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of Yahuwah, come down from the cross. They did the same thing. He said, a, he said, a wise man inclines his heart to the right and a fool to the left. All at the same time, a fool and a, somebody in the right, on the cross, saying the same thing, mocking him. But he was by himself. He was in the middle of the lion's den. So also the chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him, saying, He saves others, he cannot save himself. If he is a Malachi Yashra, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusted Allahim, let Allahim Yahuwah deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of Yahuwah. And the robbers who were crucified with him revolved in the same way. Right? Matthew 27, 45 to 56. And now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land to the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice, saying, Aliyah, Aliyah. That is my Allahim, my Allahim, why hast thou forsaken me? 
I'm a perfect sacrifice. I'm perfect. I'm a perfect offering. I'm like dang y'all. I'm fasting. I've been throwing in the lions. Then you ain't sending your Malachi to come rescue me. I deserve rescue too. And some of the bystanders hearing it said, "This man is calling for Aliyah. He's calling for somebody to come help him. A Malachi." He said, what happened to my Malachi? What happened to mine? And one of them at once ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine. And he put it in reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let's see whether Yahoo will come and save him. And we should cry out again with a loud voice and yield the roar. He died. He said, I thought you were supposed to be rescued from the lion's den. But he said, how the scripture going to be fulfilled? He said, how the scripture going to be fulfilled? And when Daniel got rescued from the lion's den, he said, all those that accused him and that set him up, he said, they were throwing the lion's den and the lions had no mercy on him. He said, but by the time they even got to the bottom, the lions tore their bones into two. And their wives and their children were thrown in. He said, behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks split. And the tombs also were open, and many of the bodies of the cut of sheep who fell asleep were raised. And coming out of the tomb after the resurrection, they went to the Gadath city and appeared to many. And when the centurion and those who were with them, keeping watch over Yahushua, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this is the son of Allahim Yahuwah. They said, Truly it was. This Yahuwah in 1928. And after this, Yahushua, knowing all the finish, he said, I thirst. To fill, he, to fill a, he said a jar full of sour wine stood there. They put a sponge of sour wine in his branch and held it to his mouth. And when Yahushua had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave it the Ruach. Because <laughs> they gave him loving. They gave him, gave him loving. He said, we're going to make sure you ain't perfect. And not even knowing he was being cut off for them. Not even knowing he was being cut off for them. Just so that they can be stay, they say, be saved, right? Just so they can be saved, right? It's Bereshit 2 and 1. Thus the Shamanis and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them, and on the seventh day, Yahuwah Elohim finished his work that he had done. And rested the Shabbat day on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. And on the seventh day, he made a kudash because Allah, he rested from all his work that he had done. So how the scripture going to be fulfilled? How the scripture going to be fulfilled? Because when the women got to the tomb early in that morning, during the feast, what happened? He rolled the stone away. He says, did he deliver you from the lion's mouth? He said, oh, king, I live forever. Live forever. He sent his malachi. And what happened? They delivered him from the lion's den. In the book of Luke 24 and 1, he said, who's going to roll back the stone? And even in, in, in Luke 9, chapter 18 and 19 and 20, and 20 they talks, even he spoke about how, why, who's going to roll back the stone? And then Malachi came and rolled back the stone. They said, he is not here, he is risen. They said, he is risen. Just like, just like any other thing. Everything has a story to it. But this, he said it's the first day of the 21st month. Well, it's the 21st day of the first month. And he said that, and Michael McCall said, they withstood me for 21 days. How long do you think they were withstood in Yahushua? Even to this day. They say 21 days, they still, they still fighting. They don't want to accept them. And McCall like, man, they still don't want to accept them. For 21 days. And then y'all standing by the river on the 24th day. He said, man, I'm going to show it to you. This Olive Kaf, or Akkad Kaf, 1, 13 to 25. Therefore, preparing your minds for action. And we just talked about our frontal lobe. We talked about action within our frontal lobe, our consciousness. And being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the con that will be brought to you at the revelation of Yahushua Mashiach. As obedient children, be not conformed to the passions of your passions of your former ignorance. But as you were called to be in, called, 
as he, and it says, but as he who called you is kudash, you also be kudash in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be kudash, for I am kudash. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from your futile ways and inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Yahushua Mashiach, like a lamb without blemish or spot. That's you. That's your offering. It has to be tamim, without any folly, little folly. That's your that's your lamb. That's your offering. He said he who glorifies me. It's just like a, a a bull, a lamb, a goat. It's greater than that. It's just like a meat a, a meal offering. Says he was forsaken before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last time for your sake, who through him are, are believers in Allahim, Yahuwah, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, kabod, so that your amunah and hope are in Yahuwah. Having purified your, your souls, that when that Daniel was, they found out he was pure and innocent. But how did he do that? Purifying your souls in obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, sister beloved. Love one another earnestly with a pure heart. Why do you think Daniel started praying just like he normally do? He started doing the same thing he normally did. Why? Because he understood. He said, I'm purifying my soul. He said, we can't find anything on him. He had no error in him, man. He was just pure. He was shalom, like they say, or tamim. He had no folly. But he said right here, not by perishable seed. He says, since you have been born, he says, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable seed, through the living and abiding word of Yahuwah, for all flesh is like grass. Where you, where you learn that? He said, just like grass, and all kabol glory is like a flower, like, like a lily. The grass withers and the, and the flower falls during the cycles when the seasons change. Because everything goes cold. But the word of Yahuwah remains forever. These are all flesh, just like the wheat grass, just like grass that withers and the flower that withers. It only comes back at a certain time, but the word remains forever. The word still is operating during the wintertime. Just like it is in the summertime. But some people are only some people are only summer summer people. I say cleats. Some people ain't correct. They don't like correct. But if he says it's the same, the word is still operating. The bar. Right? This is 2 Timothy 3 1. But understand this: that in the last days will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money. These are all say, doesn't allow your offering to be Tommy. Because it has to be a perfect offering. Your sheaf has to be perfect. Your offerings in morning and evening have to be perfect. You can be right soon. But I accept it. Lovers of money, that's, the, that's what you see today. Proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to parents, right? That's all children. Look at the children. Look at the, look at the young people, the younger, who have parents that are alive ungrateful he said ungrateful not kudash right? it says unholy but heartless unappeasable it's hard to please people slanderous slandering people ruining their reputation saying things that are not true without self control profanity things come out of their mouth they ain't got no self control brutal not loving good they don't even love good they only like the beginning I say good, everything was good, good, everything was good. Don't even like it. Treacherous. Because remember, he said, I'm gonna have mercy on the good ones. Treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit. This this is non-perfect offerings. Non-perfect glorifying praises. He said, swollen with conceitedness. Over, you know, conceited, overbearing, right? Arrogance. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of Yahuwah. 
having the appearance of righteousness, but denying its power. He said, we're supposed to declare its power. But he tells us to avoid such people. He said, avoid them. Why? For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, which means burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never, never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. What is that? If you go back to the garden, who was the one in the house came in the gate and deceived the woman? Nakash, the serpent. The serpent. Nakash. He said, for among them are serpents who are possessed with Satan. Satanoth. Because what was cool in the garden? Forever learning, never able to come to knowledge of the truth. Because she was seeking out to make herself wise and to sought after knowledge. And guess what? She was deceived by Nakash. She thought it was going to make her wise. But it actually brought death. He said, avoid these people. So he said, avoid the Nakash and the serpents within the Satan in, in the in the in their people. Because they in these people, he said, avoid these type of people. Because if you don't, they got Nakashas in there. And Satan all in all of them. It's Romans 1 and 18. For the wrath of Yahuwah is revealed from Shamaim against all unrighteousness all un ungodliness and righteousness of men by their unrighteous righteousness suppress the truth for what can be known about Yahuwah is plain to them because Yahuwah has shown it to them for his in invisible attributes namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived for since the creation of the world and things that have been made so they are without excuse you can see these things for although they knew Yahuwah, they did not honor him as Yahuwah. What do you mean? Because they have folly. A little leaven. They were offering one to me. It wasn't perfect. Or give thanks to him. They didn't even thank him. But but he said, thanks to him. But they became futile or worthless in their thinking. What? He said, Yahuwah knows the thoughts of the wise, the wisdom of this world. He said, it is what? Futile. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And exchanged the kabod of the immortal Yahuwah for images of resembling mortal man, human beings, and birds, and animals, and creeping things. The beginning. Because the beginning, he made a male and female. But when you start worshiping mortal human beings and birds and animals and creeping things, you start serving idols and gods and other images and image and likenesses. And guess what happens? Therefore, Yahuwah gave them up to their lust and their hearts of impurity. That's the same thing he did in the beginning in the days of Noah. To dishonoring their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth of you about Yahuwah for a lie and worshiped and served the, the creature rather than the creator who made the creature. Who is Barak forever, amen, a month. What it says. For this reason, Yahuwah gave them up to dishonorable passions. He gave their mind up. For women exchange their natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up their natural relations with women who were consumed with passions for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty of the error. Why? Because they're worshiping the sun, moon, and stars, the host of the Shamaim. They're worshiping mortal man birds, animals, and creeping things. They're worshiping human beings. They're giving praise. They're serving them. That's why. That's why, they, that's why they're doing all this. They're worshiping goddesses and the goddess of fertility. They're worshiping Ursa Major, Ursa Minor. The, the, how you say, the, the seven stars, the Kima, the Ketsu, Orion, Oranos. They're worshiping, he say, the goddesses, Diana. God is in right? All these beings, they're worshiping this. They worship the goddess for fertility, so therefore they get those the same due penalty. Yahuwah gives them up to that. Verse 28 says, And since they did not see fit to acknowledge Yahuwah, Yahuwah gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. So they have all those behaviors, and then he add more. Then you add more to it. 
they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, which means evil, covetousness, and malice. They exchanged, remember, they forsook farming. It's a testament of Issachar. Yes, the car said. And it, and it said, cleave the malice. And they forsook the commandments that Yahuwah gave. They are full of envy, murder. When you forsake farming, this is what you think about. Because farming keeps you busy. They were filled, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness, gossips, slanders, haters of Yahuwah, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. These are all foolishness. How do you say silliness? How do you say it? Fooly, foolishness and silliness. Crude joking. He said they feel with it. Yahuwah gave them up to it. He said, though they know Yahuwah's righteous decree, which means they know the bar, they know the word, that those who practice us, such things deserve to die. They only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. So that's why he tells you, he said, be careful what you're approving. So what are we approving? That Yahuwah says people deserve to die. These had, these, and these behaviors had nothing to do with sexual intercourse, fornication, or adultery, right? Like naturally. These are all spiritual type of behaviors that come with Yahuwah giving you up. And we know that when you start doing fornication and adultery naturally, that's just a pit that you put yourself in to do all the rest of this. So you think about the beginning after all that. When Yahuwah made Adam and Kuhu, they didn't have none of these behaviors. Adam and Kuhu didn't have none of these behaviors. They were perfect and upright. They were Tamim. They didn't have none of these behaviors. They weren't eating no animal flesh and they weren't destroying Yahuwah's creatures either. They weren't doing none of this. Which means their offering was perfect. This testament of Zabalun 8 and 8. You also, my children, have compassion toward every person with mercy in order that Yahuwah may be compassionate and merciful to you. In the last days, Yahuwah will send his compassion on the earth, and whenever he finds compassion and mercy in that person, he will dwell. To the extent that a man has compassion on his neighbor, to the extent that Yahuwah have mercy on him. For when, we, when, for when he saw me, he was moved with compassion. Whomever you see, do not harbor resentment, my children. Love on one another, and do not calculate the wrong done to each other, his brother and sister. This shatters unity and scatters all kinship and stirs up the soul. He who recalls evil receives neither compassion nor mercy. Right, this is Colossians 3 and 1. If you then have been raised with Mashiach, Yahushua, seek those things which are above, where Yahushua Mashiach is sitting at the right hand of Elohim. Set your mind on things above and not on things in the earth, where you have died and your life is hidden in Mashiach Elohim. When Mashiach, who is your life, appears, you also will appear with him in Kabot, in glory. Put to death, therefore, it is earthly in you. Sexual morality, impurity, passions, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. If you're talking about idols, on the account of these, the wrath of Yahuwah is coming. In these two, you, two you once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Why? Because so you want your, your sheath to be accepted. You want your offerings to be accepted. You want it to be without folly. A little leaven. So these are all the behaviors of those who exchange the image of Yahuwah for a mortal man. For creeping things. For things that crawl in, on the earth. And they start worshiping the creature more than the creator. But it says, do not lie one to another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of its creator. Because the image of your creator didn't have no lies. Didn't have, didn't have, he had control over anger and wrath. He didn't have no malice and slander. No sexual morality or impurity. Now his offering was perfect. He said, be therefore perfect, even as your father in Shammai is perfect. So when you offer your offering, it has to be perfect. It has to be Tommy. It has to be. It must be perfect. This is Colossians 4, Q, 257. These are the paths in the world to enlighten the heart of Adam. And 
the children of Adam. Straighten out in front of him all the paths of true justice, establishing his heart respect for the precepts of Yahuwah Elohim in the Ruach of meekness, of patience and generous compassion. We talk about if you have compassion, Yahuwah is going to be inside of you. Mercy. Eternal goodness, intelligence, understanding, and potent wisdom which trust in all the deeds of Yahuwah Elohim and depends on his abundant mercy. A ruach of knowledge in all presence of action. We talked about the frontal lobe of action. Of enthusiasm and decrees of justice and set apart plans with firm purpose and generous compassion with all the sons of truth. A magnificent purity which detests all unclean idols. Of careful behavior and wisdom concerning everything. Of concealment concerning the truth or the mysteries of the knowledge. You say, why? I can't, I can't put everything on this PowerPoint. There's a lot of stuff you can't put on here. You can't put anything. You can't say everything. You can't. These are the foundations of the Ruach of the sons of truth in the world. And the reward of those who walk in it will be healing. I like say healthful sacrifice. You will be healthy. That was one of the words for Tamim. Your sacrifice is going to be accepted. Your offerings are going to be accepted. Your prayers are going to be accepted. Plentiful shalom and long life. Fruitful offspring and the everlasting barak. Eternal enjoyment and endless life. And the crown of kabod and majestic raiment and eternal life. However, to the ruach of deceit belongs greed. Sluggishness in the service of justice. These are all imperfect offerings. Sheaves that one's going to raise. And they're going to, they're going to wave it before Yahuwah and it's not going to be accepted. Greed, sluggishness of service, judge, wickedness, falsehood, pride, haughtiness of heart, dishonesty, trickery, cruelty, much insecurity, impatience, much foolishness, impudent enthusiasm for acts performed in lustful passion. Look how many things in the world performed in lustful passion. Filthy past in the service of impurity. Daniel was delivered from the lion, the Ari, the lion's den, because he had no, he was he was innocent and he was pure. And he was obedient, even when they passed laws to try to stop him. His frontal lobe was in the action mode. And he weighed his offering, and it was accepted from Yahuwah. And Yahuwah revealed him the vision, and he showed him things. But they were still make all for 21 days, just like they still do today. But it says, blasphemous tongue, blindness of eye. Hardness of hearing, stiffness of neck, hardness of heart, in order to walk in the paths of darkness and evil cunning, darkening their mind. That's what Romans, that's what Shaul said. They darkened their mind, and Yahuwah gave them up. So actions create your demons, your Shadim. Actions create your visitations from Asmodeus and Asmodee and Listerax. Actions create your visitation from the female phantoms and demons. Your actions create your visitations at night when you can't sleep and demons torment your mind. Your actions and what you do on a daily basis create your peace if you have any. That's what creates all of that. Your actions create that. And that's what brings you to deep darkness, right? He said, in the visitation of all those who walk in it, they're going to visit you. You're going to get visits by, how you say, they have, they have to say, oh, he visited me in the night, the boogeyman. You're going to get visited by demons. When you see Yahushua, when he was sleeping, get visited by Shadim. He was sleeping by all the shit. He didn't get visited by no spirits. When you see that, when you're cold, when he was laying on a rock, he got, he got visited by spirits. Your actions create your visitations. When Daniel was fasting for that long, or when he was praying, or when people were in a certain type of mode, they had visitations. When, when, when Shamshu was getting ready to born, his, his mother had a visitation from Amalaki, telling her she's gonna have a child or living from the Philistine. Your actions create your visitations. And the visitation of those who walk in it would be abundance of affliction at the hands of the Malachi of destruction, the eternal damnation, and scorching wrath of the Allahim, their revenges. 
for permanent terror and shame without any humiliation of destruction of the fire of the dark regions. In all the ages of the generations, they shall spend in bitter weeping and harsh evil in the abyss of the darkness until destruction without end. There being a remnant or survival for them. So we, so our, our what we do, if we get leaven in our heart, if we get any sin, any type of things that are in our mind, and we go after it, we're creating the visitations for us in our life, in our lifestyle. We create it. One creates their own demon, demonic visitation. Nazarene acts of the Shalakim, how demons get power over men, women, and children. Therefore, demons, as we have just said, when once they are able, by means of opportunities afforded them to convey themselves through base and evil actions. Ready? Action. The actions into the bodies of men, women, and children. So just know, if you do an evil action, evil action in your life. Just understand, a demon demon has just jumped in your body. Whether you know it or not. So if you don't put away these things that, we, that our commander are telling us to put away so we, our office can be perfect toward your hood, that's anger, bitterness, resentment, all these are attributes of demonic possession that can take hold of your body and be in your body. And once they get in, it's like any other detox. If they remain in them a long time for their own negligence, because you're going to have to detox them out. And whose fault is that? You. Your own fault. Because they do not seek out the what is profitable for the inner being, just like the herbs that we eat during Pesach. What do herbs do? As soon as you eat it, then what type of herb it is, whether you have garlic, whether you have cilantro, whether you have dandelion, whether you have horseradish root, what happens? You eat it and it comes right out of your body, like a detox. It purges your body. Then you mix it with the, with the, with the unleavened bread, and then what? You drink it with the, the grape, and then what happens? It creates something, a chain reaction in your body that purges your body of all the intoxications and the things in your body, whether it's parasites, whether it's diseases, things start appearing on you, everything start going. And, and as often as you do it, you remember Yahushua's death and suffering till you come. And what happens? Your body is purged, naturally. But you got to eat the bar the word of the bar in order for it to come out spiritually because your actions create your demons your shadim they necessarily compel them for the future to fulfill the de desires of the demons that do who dwell in them so the actions that one does you do it the spirits demons get on side of you and they have cravings and they want it and if you don't give it the proper nutrients and that uncomfortable bitter tasting food like this and guess what happens? They're going to stay there. They're going to stay right there. Because that's what Daniel y'all realized. He said, seeing that you purify your souls in obedience. That's why he stayed in obedience as they passed that law. But they know if he had stopped praying, if he had stopped bowing his head three times a day, if he had stopped doing things that kept them demons out of him, guess what would happen? His offering would not have been accepted. And we've been no visitation from Michal on no 24th day, let alone the 21st day. Had he not stayed continuation, and he would not have been delivered from the lion. But what is worst of all at the end of the age when the demons co-sign the ageless fire, the necessity, the Ruach also that obeyed him, will be tortured in the ageless fire together with his body it has polluted. That's why the men, after they threw Daniel through conspiracy to throw him in the, in the lion's den, they got thrown into the lion's den. Because the demons that were on the inside of them that conspired them to do that and do that, guess what? Them and their children and their wives were thrown in there at the same time and they had no mercy and who fault that is their own fault their own fault had nothing to do with nobody else right this psalms of david psalms of daoud 155 pseudographic volume 2 9 through 15. oh you who instruct me in your torah and teach me your statutes so many may hear your deeds and in the going nations 
may honor your magnificence. Remember me and do not forget me and do not let me enter that which is too difficult for me. When Yahushua and Daniel went into their, their trial, it wasn't too difficult for them because they trusted in Yahuwah. The sins of my youth cast far from me. That's what people need to be praying. And my transgressions do not remember against me. O, o Yahuwah, purify me from the evil plague and do not let it again turn back to me. Dry up its roots from me and do not let the leaves bloom in me. Because that's what it's just like a plant. The demon got in and then he's trying to it's trying to bloom. And then guess what it's trying to get? It's trying to get you to feed it. Like that movie, Feed Me Seymour, right? That big old giant mantis plant. Keep trying to feed it over and over again. And it's talking to you. Magnificent are you, O Yahuwah. Hence, complete my request from before you. He said, don't let it sprout up in me because we're in the springtime. We're in early summer. This stuff's starting to sprout. Right? This, and if you have the desire of a demon, a shadim inside of you, then guess what? It's going to fulfill that desire. It's going to fulfill it. And you better obey it. And you better cast it to the ground, right? Burn it. But it says, all of you, first John, Yohukanon, 3 and 1, 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Ab has given to us that we should be called the children of Allahim. And so we are. He said, children. Children, eat your vegetables. Make sure you eat your fruits. The reason why the world does not know us is, be, is that it did not know him. So people wanted to know, why well, the world don't know me? They ain't gonna never know you. They ain't know him. Because we are Yahuwah's children. Now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we will be like him. So if you when he appears, you're gonna be like him. We are Yahuwah's children, which means you created the image and likeness, which means you are perfect. He says, because we shall see him as he is, and everyone who ha thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure, which be, they're going to be perfect, even as he is perfect. They're going to be perfect even as he is perfect. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. It's idolatry. If you worship the sun, moon, and the stars, you worship the host of the Shaman, you worship Orion, and Kitsil, the Kitsil, the Great Bear, you worship the, the constellations, you worship, you worship creeping things, behemoths, you worship the animals and fish of the sea, you make images and likeness of mortal men, you make gods out of men, and you worship them, and you fill your heart with their, their words and their thoughts, and then you go after their behaviors. You worship the fertility god, and then you go after men with men, women with women. You start going after other gods. You start following their ways. You start slandering and gossiping and lying and cheating. You start doing the things that Yahuwah hates. Because that's all the demons, that, the desires of the spirits that dwell inside of you. Since you know that he, was, he appeared in order to take away sin, in him there is no sin. Why? Because he purged you with herbs. And no one who abides in him keeps on sinning because it ain't no way. If you remember his death and suffering till you come and you continually do it, how are you sinning? There's no way because you're eating herbs, you're eating, naturally you're doing that, you're remembering his death and suffering. But then he said you're eating the bar. He said there's no way you should be sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. You shouldn't have to be negligent and it shouldn't remain in you a long time, which means you, how you still sinning? How long it's been? Which means that you're not ingesting the proper nutrients and food to purge it out. Or the things that you don't want to hear, he says, you close your ear to it. Because it's not the ear tastes the word as the plate does the food. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Right? Verse 8 says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of Satan, of Satanal. For Satanal has been sinning since the beginning, since the garden. Notice how everything goes back to the beginning. Nothing ever goes back, goes back to Barashi. The reason the son of Yahuwah appeared was to destroy the works of Satan all. No one born of Yahuwah makes a practice of sinning, for Yahuwah's seed abides in him, his word. It stays in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he has 
been born of Yahuwah. I can't. He's like, once it get on you, he said, you know what? I can keep doing that. I'm supposed to be born of Yahuwah. By this, it is evident who are the children of Yahuwah and who are the children of Satan or Satan or Samael, as they say. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahuwah, nor is the one who does not love his brother, sister, or he says his family, right? He said, ain't no way in the world. He said, ain't no way in the world. Verse 11 says, for this is the message that you have heard from the beginning. Huh? You heard from when? The beginning. Barashi. I don't know how many times, even, but that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was evil, the evil one who murdered his brother. Why? Why did he murder him? Because he, his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Because his brothers were perfect. His offering was tamim and without blemish. And his wasn't. He had hatred in his heart for his brother. And his brother didn't. The men who killed, who wanted to kill Daniel, they had envy and jealousy because he wouldn't get, be second in, second in on all the kingdom. And they had envy and jealousy and killed him. The same thing the scribes and the Pharisees and the leaders and the mores and the teachers and the evangelists and the Nabi and killed him today. In the same way they killed him during the time they killed him then. They crucified him afresh and they bring him to an open shame. And all the shepherds and all the people, they kill him again because they still have hatred for him. They have hatred for what he says and what he said. And you kill him again. Kill him again. Because his own deeds were even his brother's righteous. That's the only reason. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. He said, don't even be surprised. He said, don't even be surprised. He said, this is what you heard from the beginning. That you should love one another. When was love, when he told Adam to love one another? When he made him. When he saw Adam and Kuhl, and he put him in the garden, and he put all the animals and the creatures, and gave them what to eat, and everything to, to eat and to, how everything should flow and everything to move and how everything should be love and kind of compassion and they all worship all everything that has breath praise your hood in the garden in the gun and everything's supposed to be praising him he said that's what he gave him but you know what man do this essene book of yahushua seven folds of peace barak is a child of light who is wise in mind for he shall create the shamayim the mind of the wise is a well plowed field which giveth forth abundantly and plenty. For if thou showest a handful of seeds to a wise man or woman, he or he or she will, will see in his mind, I, a, a field of golden wheat. And if thou showest a handful of seeds to a fool, he will see only that which is before him and call them worthless pebbles. And as the field of the wise man giveth forth grain in abundance, and the field of the fool is a harvest only to stones, so it is with our thoughts. We talk about our thoughts. As the sheaf of the golden wheat lies hidden within the tiny kernel, so we get ready to weigh the sheaf in about four days. He said, you're gonna weigh the sheaf. And he said, it's hidden in the tiny kernel. So is the Malkut, the Shamayim, hidden within our thoughts. Your, your consciousness, your Makashba, your Yetzer, your thinking process is where your sheaf is. And when you wave your hands, and your sheaf, as a priest, as a kahan, redeemed by the blood of Yahushua, offering up a sacrifice of praise, which is a fruit of your lips, and you're perfect and upright, Yahuwah will accept your offering. But if you be stained with demons and behaviors that Yahuwah don't like, then guess what happens? And if you're around people and they're cautious, it's going to be a little leaven, and you'll have a bunch of leaven in your heart. And then what happens? Your offering not accepted. So beware the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees. Beware the leaven of the Jupiter priests and the, and the Cosmo priests. Beware the leaven of the news articles. Beware the leaven of the news media. Beware the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees, the teachers, the, the pastors, the teachers, the mores, and all these people. Beware the leaven of your brother and your sister, your mother and your father. Beware the leaven and your husband, your wife. Beware the leaven of the people around. Beware the leaven of your neighbor. 
You're worthy of loving it for the things you eat that are causing sicknesses in your body. So that's, that's even the things that we eat. And people still eat it and it, it makes you sick. It makes you feel a certain way and you still eat it. That's leaven. That's called stupidity. And you know you who have no pleasure in fools. And that's natural. So if they be filled with power, it says, and the sheep of the golden wing lies hidden within the tiny kernel, so is the Malkuth of Shammai hidden within our thoughts. So if they be filled with power and love and wisdom of the Malachim of Shammai, so shall they carry us to the Shammai seat. But if they be stained with corruption and hatred and ignorance, they shall chain our feet to pain and suffering. No man can serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. You can't be disobedient to your parents and then offer an a, a, a actual offering to Yahuwah as a sweet smelling savor. You can't be lover of yourself rather than lovers of Yahuwah. You put yourself before Yahuwah and you expect your offering to be accepted. You can't love slander and gossip more than you love Yahuwah and you think your offering will be accepted. You can't love fornication and adultery and teachings of adultery and to think your offering is going to be accepted to Yahuwah. But if they be stained with corruption and hatred and ignorance, hatred, they shall chain our feet to pain and suffering. No man can serve two masters, neither can an evil thought. Thoughts. Abide in the mind filled with the light of the Torah. He who, he who hath found shalom peace have, in the mind, with the mind have learned to soar beyond the realm of the Malachim. Know the shalom with thy heart. Fulfill the shalom, this peace, with thy body. 2 Corinthians 11 and 1. I wish to bear with me in my foolishness. Do not do bear with me. For I have a divine jealousy for you, since I betrothed you to one husband. We talked about betrothed and a virgin to present you a pure virgin to Yahushua Mashiach. Perfect. Tell me. A perfect woman. People are like, no, I'm going to be perfect. Perfect is not a bad word. Tamim is not a bad word. Complete is not a bad word. Like they say, body. Because it is, it's it going to put you in a body garment. It's going to put you in a linen, linen white garment. If you're pure and right and you're pure virgin, it's going to put you in a body garment. A body linen white garment. To present you a pure virgin of Mashiach. But I'm afraid, as the serpent deceived Kuhu by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray by sincere, pure devotion to Mashiach. Your thoughts will make you not to me. That's where the demons dwell. That's where Satan comes at. When he said Satan left Yahushua, it left his mind. He said, Your pure devotion. That's why, that's why Daniel, he said he found no error in him. He was innocent, he was pure. pure virgin because he was a virgin yeah Daniel was a pure virgin so was Yahushua first all of you can now 5 and 20 and we know that the son of Yahuwah has come and has given us an understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son Yahushua Mashiach he is the true Elohim and eternal life Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Because we are the children. He says, how are we made the children of Yahuwah? And so we are. Keep yourself from idols. Keep yourself from a little leaven. Keep yourselves from not being tamim. Keep yourselves within yourself for the rest of your life. From the influences of Mahadana and the Kima. And break the band, the cords of Orion in your consciousness. And know the one who made him, and the one who can lead about the great bear. And the one who will bring forth Arcturus in the constellation, and make them move in the sphere around him. Yahuwah himself. Odi E Shaluma, Odi E 35, 1 through 7. The sprinkle of Yahuwah overshadowed me, and the serenity. And it caused a cloud of shalom to stand over my head, that it might guard me at all times, and it became my salvation to me. Everyone was disturbed and afraid, and, and there flowed from them a smoke of judgment. He said, if Yahushua over you and he watering you, 
He said, the son of Adam be lifted up. He said, I'm going to draw people. He said, when the clouds are full, as the book of Ecclesiastes say, what do they do? They emptied themselves. They emptied themselves on the earth. Just like Yahuwah's tears that come down from his mouth, his eyes, and he watered the earth. But you know, when people do that, he said, Marvel not, the world hates you, and they're going to give you smoking judgment. But I, will, I was tranquil in Yahuwah's legion. Oh, and then one day, he said, tranquil. I was Tamim. I was tranquil. I was tranquil in my thoughts. I had a pleasing aroma offering. I had a noof. That was noof meant. It meant tranquility, quietness. The offering that he had was quiet. Why do you think Yahushua ain't say nothing? I think he was quiet. He said it was a quiet, it was a, it was a pleasing aroma. He said, I was tranquil in the cookie who's legion. More than the shade was he to me. And the foundation, more than foundation. And I was carried like a child by his mother, and he gave me milk. The dew of Yahu. And I grew strong in his favor and rested in his perfection. <laughs> I rested in his tamim offering, his sheaf offering. I rested in him, in his perfection, not my own, because he told us when he brought us a Mizraim, he said, don't think it's in, in Dabarim, not chapter 9, he said, don't you think because of your righteousness, your uprightness, that I brought you out of the land of Mizraim? <laughs> but it ain't your perfection. And I extended my hands, huh? That's what we're getting ready to do. We getting ready to do that. And I extended my hands in the ascent of myself and I directed myself near the Most High Yahuwah. That's what we getting ready to do. And I saved my, and I was saved near him. That's what we getting ready to do. Perfect offering. Perfect offering. Right, Proverbs 15, 17. Better, better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fatted ox and hatred with it. That word for herbs is yarak. It means herbs, vegetables, garden greens, vegetable greens, herbs. Because you know what herbs do, it purges the body. But he said it's better than a fatted ox. He said, well, love, or well, ahava, that's human love for human objects. For a human object. He says, a man, to, he says, a, between a man and a woman, God's love to his, Yahuwah's love to his people. He said, better is a plate of herbs where love is. Proverbs 15, 17, better is a dinner of herbs where love is and a fatted ox than a fatted ox where is hatred. That word for hatred is sinner. It says sinner, hatred, hate, hatred, hateful, hatred. Hatred with, right, this is, Bereshit 1, 28 through 31, ESV. And all Yahuwah barak them, and Yahuwah said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the shamayim, over every living thing that moves on the earth. And all, all of him Yahuwah said, Behold, I have given every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food, your akla, and every beast of the feed earth, and to every bird of the Shamaim, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. Why? Because better is a plate of herbs where love is. Because this is the commandment you heard from the beginning, that you shall love one another. Because that's the commandment that he gave in the, here in the garden, in the garden, that you should love one another. And you all, he saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And he said, he's going to save the good one. You can have mercy on those who are good, on the good ones. He said, well, Mayo Tao, and Yehuda said, and there was evening and there was morning, Shashiyun. The word for plant is a chef. Green herbage, green plants, herbage. He said, better is a plate of herbs where love is than a fatted ox where there's hatred. 
Spirit of hatred work together with Satan on Satan. That's why when he came into the gun, his whole idea was to murder and destroy and to kill. And that's what he succeeded and did. So better is a play to urge where love is and the fatter awkward and hatred. What happened after Adam fall? They didn't start, they stopped doing the things they were doing to purge the body and eating the things that you were commanded. He said, better is a plate of herbs where love is than the fat of ox where hatred. Because these things that Yahuwah commanded, how he said, purge out demons. Amen, his bar. Right, that word for tree. And every he said, every tree, that word is eights. It's timber, stock, plank, firmness. Right? We, we talk about Amuna. He said, every tree, because he's supposed to eat, and tree, eat from trees. Every tree, that be, with seed, and he said, in its fruit, that word for fruit is pari, pari fruitful. Bows are fruitful. That's fruit. It means what? It also means offspring and children, because you can have children. He said, every tree that bears fruit, that's fruitful. With seed, as zara, that has fruit with seeds. Zara, sowing, offspring, sowing seed fruit plant, because better is a plate of herbs where love is than a fatted ox with his hatred. They got hatred for Yahuwah since the beginning. That's why they killed a fatted ox. Because Yahuwah done away with it. He, he moved, he moved, he put a cease sing to animal sacrifices and eating flesh. Because this is the commandment we heard from the beginning. That you should love one another. When he made Adam and Kula in the garden for love, he said, better is a plate of herbs where love is than a fatted ox with hatred. When he made Adam and Kula in the garden and gave him what to eat, he told him to what? That's, that's where love was birthed. That's where love, Ahab, was giving birth at, in the garden. In the garden, right? The word for, he said, you're going to have this for your food, your akla. He said, all that's going to be for your food, your eating. Your consume, your meat. The trees bearing food with seed is gonna be your meat. That's, he said the herbs. He said better is a plate of herbs where love is. That's where love was at in the garden. Ahab was in the garden. He said this is the commandment you heard from the beginning that we should love one another and that you should love your brother and your sister. Why do you think he threw out Cain? And amazingly, after that, Kua sinned, and they had all fell from the garden, the gun. He said, this is the commandment you heard from the beginning. Adam never stopped loving Kua the way he should. Right, he still worked from the ground too. He did everything he's supposed to. All these things, they took place. He said, this is the commandment you heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. Why do you think the children of Adam were different from the children of Cain? He says, consume food. He said, because better is a plate of herbs where love is than a fatted ox where there's hatred. He said, you're going to have all this for food, your ukla. That's your ukla. That's your food. That's your food. It's all of you, Ukanon 1, 2, 24, 24 to 27. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. So just like you ate the bitter herbs, Just like you ate the bitter herbs, the unleavened bread, and the grape. But he said, Where is the lamb? Because better is a plate of herbs where love is than a fatted ox where there's hatred. Just like it was in the garden. He said, Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the bin and in the ah. And this is the promise he has made to us. Eternal life. When did they, when did Adam and Kua have eternal life? In the garden. They were immortal beings. He said, He's now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. But if he takes from the tree of life, he's gonna live forever. He's gonna be immortal. So what's the promise of Adam? To eat from the tree of life? And to be immortal. 
Because it's often going to be tell me in order to do that. Be perfect. I write these things about those who are trying to deceive you. You got to be perfect. You got to be tell me. You got to be without fault. You can't have a little leaven. It's stench. It's a ba'ash in your whole, it gives off the smell. Sweet smelling savor is a praise to Yahuwah without the behaviors of, of the things Yahuwah hates. You gotta be perfect. Tell me. He said, I write these things about those who are trying to deceive you because they try to tell you, you ain't nobody, you, ain't, you can't be perfect. You, you ain't supposed to be perfect. In actuality, you can live perfect. All you gotta do is avoid the right people. Avoid the right conversations, avoid the right people. And watch out for Nakash. Because among those type people, Nakash coming to you. And what he coming to do? To deceive. And guess what? You'll be forever learning and never able to come to knowledge of the truth like Kahua. She was in the garden and she got that wisdom. And guess what? Nakash deceived her. And then she deceived her husband. And they both died. Move, move. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. Why? It's just like the cycles. 364 day cycle. Does the sun and the moon, the Shemesh in the yard in the, in the early summer, early winter, late winter, the solstice, do they need somebody to teach them that? Do they need somebody to teach them when to the, when the rise and when to set? Do they need somebody to teach them, teach the grass to grow? Do they need somebody, the roses know when to sprout? They know exactly what to do. The bears know when to hibernate, and they know when to come out. Everything knows what to do. The bears know, the, the birds know when to make their nest, and they know not to. Everybody knows what to do. They have no need that nobody teach them. So when will human beings get to the point where nobody gets to that point? No man teaches neighbor. To the point where everybody knows what to do, and nobody has to say anything. And everything will be perfect. There will be no fighting, no arguments, no nothing. It'll just be like... Everybody knows what to do. Nobody has to get a commandment to do something. It would just happen. Nobody has to be told this. It just happen. It just it'll be like just like that. Just like a revolving wheel. When? They'd be like, it took Yashra 40 years just to get to the point where they could enter the land. They still after they entered, they still went right back to what they were doing before. So, you know that ain't work. There's only one person who can get you back, and that's Yahushua Mashiach. But, he said, but as his anointing teaches you about everything, and it's true, and it's no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Abide in him. You have no need to know how to tell you about it. He's like, okay, I don't, okay, we know what to do. That's it. Boom, let's move, right? And he just keeps going, it doesn't stop. It's a revolving door. It just keeps going. It's like a, a wheel. It doesn't stop. It's fixed. Seven celestial circles moving on the seven celestial curve, and it's moving early summer, late summer, late early winter, late winter. The sun gets closer. The birds get married. Everything is productive. Then the sun goes away. Everything doesn't get productive. Some trees lose their foliage. Some doesn't. And they minister according to their positions. My or mean shalom. My or mean shalom. Greater light, lesser light. Godot more me shala, Godot more me shala, right? All these are a part of what? Greater light, lesser light. It just keeps going. But he said, as it is taught you about him, but when he taught all the things in the luminaries in the first six days and the seventh, he rested. He has no need that one of us to teach him anymore because once, it, once they hit seventh day, they just repeated it again. And he just kept doing it over and over again. It hasn't stopped since the beginning. The only thing that stopped is human. Right, so we look at all that. Look at the, look at what well, I say, a cosmosa, but then we also look at Yuji Mashiach and the perfect offering and the minka that one has to be offering, even the waving of the sheep. But even as that, he said, don't he said, don't even rush back to get your ordinary food and the things that you normally would do. But he said, stay in a disciplinary mode, and then after that day, immediately after that day, you offer your wave offering, and it has to be tamim, it has to be perfect without leaven, without any spot or wrinkle. Just like you in this time, people focused on getting the leaven out of their house. I say the, the sa'ur, the ma'at, kamats, but then we are gotta look, look at getting the leaven continually, not allow the leaven to rise up and to come back in our life or to even hear it. Matter of fact, don't even taste it. Don't even touch it. 
Matter of fact, avoid it. In people, places, and in things you touch, and things you do. Right, so when you do that, you'll find your offerings continually to be accepted. Right? And just like you just said, whatsoever you ask in my name, it shall be given. He, why, would, why would a father withhold a good gift from a child that does everything he says? Why would he not deliver a child that does everything he says, like Daniel? Why would he not raise Yahushua from the dead, from the third day, if he didn't do everything his father told him to do? Because everything his father told him to do was to fulfill the whole Torah. And he did that. Why would, he, why would he leave your soul in the shio, in the ground, if you did everything he told you to do? And you're a good child, son and daughter. He would not. Because he is a father that has no darkness at all. He has no darkness at all. And he would not leave a good child. Because he ain't going to have mercy on the good ones. So we look at all that, we look at our truth, and we look at, our, look at the truth and look at our understanding, and we walk in it. We say, Kum Halak, rise and walk. And even as the sun comes to the ecliptic plane and rising above, so are the plants starting to rise up. And as they rise, they bear fruit. Right? So the meek, for the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth.